All right, it's mailing in Thursday as we are mailing in for the last time of the season. Surprise, Mother Scooters. Yeah. He's I'm back. back. We found him on the side of a I dirt road. I am. I mean, back. is he though? Because there isn't a name tag. That's okay. I am nameless, but I am back. People know who I am. Oh, there, there you go. Already. Hey, there you there go. There it is. So, okay. Wrong Twitter handle, by the way, but it's okay. Who the fuck's? Oh, Steph. Uh, let's say Steph Rodis. Yes. Yes, I'm Greek. You should change. You should change your Twitter handle to Steph is fired. I should have. Uh, we. Steph went to HR like a giant. My hair is a mess again. Pussy. God damn. Yeah, my hair too is also a mess. And we had to hire him back. And it no. turns out uh, you can't fire someone for having terrible hair. No, no. you can't. Look at that. No, no. Probable you cause. Know, seriously, though, for Sunday, please take care of that. Why? I'm not on camera. You are on camera. You look. You know what, Steph? You're also on camera now, Steph, by the way. One yeah, month but ago. this is fake camera. It is well, small we, camera, Logitech. Logitech. More than a month ago, we, we were at the, our man in the middle's wedding, and you had a very nice hairstyle. I did. Man. I yeah. did. Because I got it cut that week, or else it would have been a disaster. So we're not going to cut it? Uh, no, I'll probably just slick it back and put gel. You always oh, should go extra slick. There it is. That there picture is there legendary. Look at, photo, man. look at that photo. Legendary because... Legendary because, because I look amazing. None of these amazing. people are playing in the finals. No. I no. mean... Who's I the mean, closest? Including my Uncle Sebastian and my cousin Sebastian in the background. Who's, who's closest? He's not playing was the it finals. Marco Andre who was the closest to play in the finals? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, less than the semis. Less ha! Yeah. Sucks yeah. to be him. And, and who is that guy in this picture? Marc Andre. Who is Marc Andre, Mo? Oh, I thought you remember my cousin Sebastian again. Mark I feel like your cousin Sebastian is the guy that's in the, t- like the left. Well, yeah, now it's gone. Now I can't see because the light's in the way. Uh, who's that? It's like he's, right. 80s, he's like an eighties wrestler, Mark Andre. It looks ben, like a Hulk Hogan promo. Doesn't put it? in the poll, please. Uh, no, no. Uh, is he, polls are useless. Is Mark Andre Deloney uh, an eighties wrestler? Yes. Pretty sure people will say he's a sixties wrestler. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so it is the uh, last episode of this season. Uh, we, before we go to Rochelle and Brossard, we went through, was it, 13 weeks of dragon, dragon. And suffering in the shipping container, and now we get to free ourselves to go to over the bridge to the uh, Brossard complex. You call it the, freeing ourselves? Yes. yes. I call it slave labor for the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Put on a poll question. Is it slave labor for Eagle to That's work two poll hours? questions already from all. It is. All right, so what we are going to preview every division from co-ed right to Div A. And uh, we will dive into it right now. And let's go into the co-ed, which we did Head absolutely first zero first. coverage this year. But we'll know what to talk about now in well, the two Well, I was at the third down for what in Party Race game. Um, third down for what? Why were you there? Well, I was there for all the games. Fair. Although I didn't do your job. first hour. Doing your job. Um, third down for what beat, beat down a party mix. Uh, Jeff Brown had an awful, awful night. Um well, he's also not their quarterback, usually. Correct, correct. Uh, right, Delorier is not there. I'm completely lost. That's okay, Mo. You usually are. It, 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 did make it, it did make it difficult. I uh, mean, you can't go into a semis without your quarterback and expect to actually do something. I mean, it does happen. It does happen. Very rarely. This wasn't the case. Uh, Mary Lou Cotinoel was the bright spot on defense, was all over the field. But uh, in general, just Kevin Lubin kept it simple. Uh, he himself made a couple of mistakes as well. Uh, but whether it was Alex David on third down or any legacy uh, closer to the end zone, uh, those were the ones that, that really helped propel uh, third down for what. Um, well, who also didn't have their quarterback. Sarah yeah. Parker was not there. Yeah. So, um, so, But Kevin Lube, I mean, is a better quarterback yeah. than Jeff Brown. Like that's, clearly. that's correct. So it's like, It doesn't take much, and his stat line does not lie. Kevin Lube, who had uh, tore his Achilles. Yes. Good for him. He recovered. That's a pretty big injury. I don't even know how he's playing. Like, he even yeah. came out like the last play of the game. He kind of backpedaled and kind of came down, kind of wonky. And I spoke to him after the game. Honestly, I'm I'm happy he's back. I'm happy he's doing well. I'm happy he's healthy. But I was like, dude, what are you doing here? And he told me. He says, yeah. He says, uh, he's dating a physical therapist who's helped him get through it, and uh, she she helped him get. Up and ra- playing in six months, in less than six months, and he uh, he was thrilled to be there. Looked good out there, ca- despite that that little issue. But he did say that uh, the biggest issue he's had is regaining strength in the leg that he hasn't really been able to use, and so maybe that's why he wasn't able to backpedal the way he normally would, and because uh, otherwise right. like, he's a, he's a he's a he would be a shutdown defender in this game, and he was good. But honestly, you know, you can see he's like a, a step slower than. All right, put on the poll. Uh, should Kevin Durant be inspired by Kevin Luban's recovery to get back in the NBA? On the poll, you go. Thank you. All right, so we have our finalists. Should Kevin Durant get Kevin Lubin's physical therapist? 
Should he? Yeah, I mean, would he oh, date? Nah. Nah, I wouldn't trust Kevin Lubang because he's a sneak. Yeah, but then yeah. Kevin Lubang is gonna be like depressed. Poor guy. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, why would you do that? He's a nice guy. I didn't do it. You I'm did. asking a question. You mentioned I'm putting it. it on the poll. You mentioned it because you Put wanted that. How many polls? That's like four. We have like four polls in the first five minutes. All right, here we go. Like let's let's dive into the championship finals then. Uh, Sunday, You're August. The other game? Oh yes. Of Come on now, Mo. Uh, Midtown Black Mamba, Yin Yang, Michael Scott. Which one? Midtown. Well, I'll start with Midtown Black Mamba just because Midtown will be playing if they're down for what um, in the finals, and if that's the game we're going to talk about momentarily. Yeah. Midtown's a good team. They have some solid talent. Uh, they have uh, they have a Division A B quality player in uh, J C Monet Fanef. He's he played quarterback. Uh, it's usually Phil Enchil, but uh, I I think he's on vacation now, so he had to. Step he was in spotted. I saw him not too long ago. I saw his Instagram. He looked on vacation. Oh, <laughs> so pretty sure. Um, but yeah, these are some quality uh, players. Uh, both the men and the the women. They're they're talented, and uh, they get the job done. Uh, Mo's elbows in the way of the person that had two touchdowns. Yeah, so oh. I'm trying to figure out who that is, but Eagle is not doing his job. Well, yeah, that's it. I figured it was Marie Lou. Uh, right Marie awesome. Lou is a snapper. She's a fantastic player. She's won in the the, the co-ed finals already. That Why is his picture so distorted? I thought she feels pretty good. Look more imposing. Yeah. <laughs> <I feel laughs> like you're the host. She's supposed to be more imposing. I'm but watching uh, you guys now. <laughs> <laughs> God. Now you're in bed with us. Now he's breathing out there. It's super snuggle. Weird. Triple Aww. snuggle Thursday. Oh. For those listening to the podcast, Mo is not snuggling with us. No, he is not. He is arms distance away from peace. Um, but, uh, yeah, Jordan, uh, I, I, I'm i sorry, but I can't pronounce his last name. So I'm just going to go with Jordan. Mo, can you try and uh, pronounce Jordan's last name, Mo? Uh, Jordan, Jordan Raya Milera. All right. You sound super off. But <laughs> fantastic player. <laughs> and uh, he's also, he played in Division B. Yeah, and uh, even though it was a sub, but he's a Division B quality player. Like Midtown is just a stacked roster, and uh, they deserve to win. And it came down to the last play; they were very but even, surprised. Even Pio Belanger yeah, played, played you football. I can't see because now the corner of the uh, co-ed recap is covering his name. So uh, there you go. Yeah. All the right, Pio Belanger is a solid. Wait, what's well. also cool, like for Black Mamba, it's, it's cool to see guys like Etienne Brisson, uh, Felix. Those guys aren't, aren't uh, established. FPF commodities actually no, but they're so, co-ed, yeah they're, really they're cool. showing their skill set because these guys are talented in yeah. their own way and uh, you know maybe they'll get discovered because like I said you have people playing co-ed that play in higher divisions than division 6 or E in this case and uh, they might call them over to play with their higher division team so it honestly JC came up to me at the end of the well he told me uh, when I saw him on Monday that uh, they didn't want this game to... They thought that they would run away with this game. They got the bye, and uh, they finished first, and their their roster on paper is better than uh, the other, than uh, Black Mamba. But uh, Black Mamba didn't let that frighten them. I mean, uh, honestly, if you throw four interceptions and you only lose by one, like you know that you did something right on the defensive part of the game, at least. So on, uh, on a team that Mo would have no association with, uh, drunk again and looking to score... Beat, yeah. Uh, yeah. Kiss my end zone, forty to eighteen. Opposite end of the tables. Um, Rocco Cristiano. Um, look, he's he's a CJ. Well, I mean, Brent Bakken's on that team. He's he's a CJ quarterback. He's got Chris Miard on the team. He's got Akeem Hoy Charles, Mike Sanobi. These are all well-known FPF uh, stars. Um, Rocco Cristiano actually able to score three touchdowns as well on the ground. Um, yeah, he usually thinks front first, which uh, works in the co-ed. Uh, and uh, it worked this way. He had and the same uh, amount of rushing uh, touchdowns. Pitt Panther, Fred Potvin, national champion for McGill Martlets. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And uh, so that's, it's a team that's stacked in their own right. Um, where And Jonathan Harrod leading Kiss not My End Zone. Either. It's a team that, you know, they have some nice pieces. But that's not uh, their quarterback either, though. Their quarterback is Josh Vasquez, and they probably would have put up a better fight if they yeah. had Josh Vasquez at their QB. Well, but it's it like it's a guy. I was just gonna say it's a guy who doesn't typically play quarterback, oh, yeah. and like that's why the fact that he put up 18 points is impressive, nonetheless. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we see here uh, Kevin Donna doing the damage uh, on defense. Uh, Kevin Rilu, sorry, Rilu made uh, hell of an effort on defense. Um, so it's 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 good to see, but that's a, that's a drunk again looking to score, just by far by far the mi- the, the the strongest team. I was really pulling for Michael Scott's tots just because the, re- the the office reference, fantastic office um, reference. Tough loss for them though because Kenny yeah. Baz uh, or Kenny Batulier 
could be out for a very long yeah. It would have to be there. He's been playing injured though the whole season. He injured yeah. himself in co-ed in like earlier this season. Then he came back with the knee brace, and now he re. Well, what happened was he caught a cross pass going right to left, going up the sidelines, and then next thing he collapsed on the ground in pain, and some thought okay, maybe it's an ACL. Well, I, I spoke to Kenny the uh, day afterwards, the loss that he had, and he said uh, it's very doubtful I'll be playing anytime soon because what happened was he tore a bit of the tibia. The tibia went into the ACL joint where it wasn't supposed to go, and now the doctor's are saying, hey, we're going to have to go with this in a cautious way here. So we're hoping for a speedy recovery for uh, Kenny Boutillier because a great guy off the field on it as well. That's a tough blow because, I mean, not to say they were going to beat Yin Yang. He was their offense up until that point. He was also their defensive star. Yeah. You can see that they defense. were deflated at that point. That yeah, they had for no, sure. Of course, uh, they didn't feel like playing game. without one of their, their guys. Yeah, that it, very tough. A you know, they great had guy it, that he is, but it's tough to see him. They had him on the back of their head, at the back of their mind, and uh, that just got their attention away from uh, the football game. What? Yeah, but uh, so, so we we now game. instead we see we see Gino DeFazio – Playing in two finals, this being one of them. Um, so he's there he all day, yeah. He had a great he had a great connection with uh, Kyle and Beckles, um, who caught five catch th- five five catches for two touchdowns in this game. Um, it's it's been it's been kind of awesome to see to see her co- contribution, given that the team has guys like Isaiah Lard on the team, uh, guys like Jonathan Weir. So Justin Weir, sorry, Justin Matthew Weir, and, jo- and Jonathan Weir as well. Jonathan Bardo is not yeah. bad either. So, so like it's it's a team that's stacked with uh, male players, but the, the females yeah. actually doing uh, their damage as well. Uh, Olivia Sorme scoring uh, scoring as well in that game. So uh, uh, Yin Yang does pose an interesting uh, matchup going forward. Gino Defazio being a decorated FBF quarterback, um, now leading his team in in, in this sort of new format. Um, do you want to start looking at the games to come, gentlemen? Yeah, w- question for you. What would you prefer, winning the co-ed or his uh, Div? Probably Division C. C title. He won the co-ed last pick season. one. Which one would you pick? He'd pick Division C, probably. Put on the poll, please. Which mm. trophy would you know Defaz prefer? That's what, six? Co-ed or the Div C title? That's, que- that's six poll questions? Six poll questions. I'd rather, like, what would you know Defaz would prefer, cold pizza or uh, room temperature hot dogs? That's a tough question. It is tough. I don't even know what I, I would. I what would pizza. you prefer there, more cold pizza? Because like you cold don't pizza. eat pork, Mo. It's, it's cheating. Yeah. It's a beef hot dog. Cheating. No, I go cold pizza. I had cold pizza today. No, yeah. I sliced it. What about you, Peace? I'd go cold pizza. I like cold pizza. Yeah, I mean, cold pizza is good. But like so cold pizza is good. Okay, so what's, what's like the next best thing after cold pizza? Because we, we all evidently prefer that. So like, what's the thing you would compare to cold pizza in terms of like fast food? Unlikely like deliciousness. Hmm. Really, guys? Yeah, it's a really. Yeah, good because I don't usually eat thought. like food that's not warm. So. Okay. Uh, so but uh, I, gu- I guess I guess uh, no. It's, I eat it when it's cooked, not when it's not well, when it's been out and. So you would come straight from the fridge. Yeah, pretty much. Not really from the oven, guy. Come on. Right. It'll probably be the hot dog, though. I say it would be a hot dog. Room temperature hot dog. Or bad. like. Or like a reheated. Like leftover Chinese food. Uh, reheated puts in. Is that too? What? Yeah. Reheated yeah. puts in. So we. Would, would you rather eat cheese melts twice? Best would thing. you rather eat reheated poutine or uh, cold pizza mm-hmm. or uh, day old Chinese food? Now nah, cold pizza obviously wins. Yeah, cold pizza I mean, trumps the I mean, leftover Chinese food is pretty good too. Yeah, but day old is a bit weird. Well, you don't call it day old; just leftover. Well, I mean, you call cold it day old, wins. so I'm going with cold, cold pizza, pizza wins. wins. Day old cold pizza still wins. Cold Eagle, pizza. does anything beat cold pizza? Cereal. <laughs> really? <laughs> You're playing the wrong game, bro. <laughs> God damn it. All right, let's talk about the finals then. Uh, what kind of cereal, Eagle? Drunk again and looking to score. Oh. Frosted Flakes. Is that Against the segment? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of cereal? Drunk again looking to score. That's so. not the kind of cereal I was talking about. Against Yin Yang. Okay. So let's dive into it. Uh, what do you expect from this game between Dal LTS against Yin Yang? Um, well, Rocco Cristiano is not a tall quarterback. Uh, but he is a str- scrambling quarterback. I don't actually think Isaiah Allard is particularly effective against running quarterbacks the way he is against pocket passers. I was like a little bit about the damage he did to Simon Dagene, Um Oh, man, we'll he was crying small. We'll talk yeah. more about that. That was, that was a rough game. Do you have All a picture right. of Simon crying? Every upset. picture of Simon was Simon crying. All right, so fair. Just we should actually hack into his... his uh, his Facebook profile and change all of his pictures to crying Jordan. To crying Jordan. Yeah. Not crying uh, R. Kelly. 
No, no, no. Jordan would be better. Yeah, that, that one didn't age well. Jordan, no, Jordan would be better. Okay, so looking at this game here, um, if Isaiah Lard is neutralized, who steps up yet for Ying Yang? Because you look at... Uh, I think Gio DeFazio. He's, he's got to score. He's got to put team. No, he'll probably hit to the... Justin Weir will probably show up if Isaiah Lard shot us. But look, but at, the, look at the horsepower, though, on the lats. We are... See, that's the problem, though. Korean, they have trials. They have a lot of players. But see... They don't always play every snap, and because they have they have like two rotations, and uh, they keep saying we're too many players that we just joined because we wanted to join, and it was more like fun for them. So uh, it, they they I've seen it that having the all the players that they do have, they kind of get out of the rhythm of the game, mm -hmm. and uh, they they sh they get cold unless they reduce their roster. Yeah. But uh, other than that, if they stick to the way it was, that's that's going to be their downfall. I, I just realized players. you're playing with your car keys. I am. I was like, what's that noise coming from? And we can hear it entirely in the, in the headsets. Yeah. Kaya Allen, Beckles, uh, and Olivia Sormani combined for 11. I don't know. Wow. Peace made me feel bad. They, I was trying to. They combined for 11 touchdowns uh, for Yin Yang. Um, I'm curious to see them have a big game. Again, given that Juno DeFazio is likely going to have to score five or six times, uh, because I, I do think... Um, I do think tr Drunken and looking to score is going to put up points. So we're going to have to see... Uh, who he gets contributions from, I think he can lean heavily on them because he did he did for large parts of the season. All right, mid uh, Midtown against third down for what? Midtown is, is a very good team if you look at the talent that's on both sides. Uh, well, but there's talent missing for third down for what? Uh, but are they missing for? Yeah, it's true. So um, Midtown knows this. Uh, like I said, I saw JC on Monday, and he was like, "Yeah, we're facing third down for what?" But they have. Uh, uh, Murphy's not there. Yeah, Jeremy Murphy's not Mancini's there. Mancini's not there. Uh, yeah, Jeremy Murphy's not there because of Concordia training Concordia camp. Concordia and yeah. Mancini's there too. Tristan Mancini's yeah. there too. And uh, another player is there. But those are... Th and that's Kevin Lubin's not 100%. And Kevin Lubin's not 100%. Right. And, and that's basically their offense. So, I mean, if they're not there, it'll be tough for third down to, what, to put up the points. And Midtown has enough to uh, put up many points. So, that, 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 it's unfortunate because if they did have... If they both had a full roster... It will probably be a very great game, but honestly, I feel like the fact that they might are missing players is just—it's not gonna. So it's like help the FIBA them. World Cup of basketball, everyone's just dropping like pretty flies. much. I don't know why, but yes, especially Team Canada. Who's on but Team what's, US? What's interesting is that in this game, perhaps um, Carmelo Anthony still wouldn't be able to get in because apparently, no. even though he's the greatest American Olympian of all time, most decorated, yeah. um, can't can't get on team. All right, third down for what? Midtown will play. 210 Sunday, which won't be the case. He'll probably play 225. That's how it was always. Says, says, but says be there 13. on time just in yeah, case. Exactly. Be I there at 13. Be there for 220. Be so there at 13, like it's on the screen. Um, has any other. We haven't had a team in, in the finals like be late, right? And be down like 6 nothing. That's never happened. I think so it's going to happen this weekend. Oh, yeah. Put it on the poll. Will it happen this weekend? Will the team be late? Have we ever started the finals this early, Eagles? No. No. Like never started at one o'clock. Uh, you can time. tell just by the disdain on, on the tone of my voice. Yes. We have never started this early. I'm v I'm really looking forward uh, to working uh, 15 hours on on Sunday. That's it's more than 15 hours. hours. <laughs> yeah, well, I just picked a number at random. All right, uh, 15 number. hours. You, we're at the field. You're you're in charge of my schedule, so you tell me how so many. So while working. we're well, while you guys are slaving away, the president will be uh, slaving on the sun beaches of uh, Bermuda. You know what the worst well, part is? President he could have very easily booked a flight that left the Saturday instead of the Sunday and been there, and he chose not to. <laughs> is he coming back on Monday? Yep. But he's not flying out Monday. He's flying. You know what's funny Monday. is last year I flew back a day early from Nashville. Yeah. So that I could be at the finals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look, Simo even picked me up at the airport, so you know that I could be there. You know what's funny? Finals. I had you were prepping box, on the saw. flight. Yeah, I was prepping in my hotel room and on the flight. And, and Rob doesn't chicken even box. leave. I had a chicken day box. Early. And I still showed up because Rob asked me to last year. Chicken box warrior right here. Yeah, you could have easily said no. All right, E two. Let's recap the games. Uh, Mambo to no one's Wait, surprise. wasn't there a vaccine for that? Is Mo an anti-vaxxer? I feel news. like Mo seems like an anti-vaxxer. Freaking news? I'm not Mike Roy. Freaking news? Right. Uh, Mike Roy. Mambo. More on Mike Roy later. Is yeah. there going to be more on Mike Roy later? There yeah, will be. He's playing. All right, fair. Uh, Mambo defeat Clinkers 39-21. Yeah. No, no, Are you shocked by the f result of Mambo getting crushed and Marc-Andre Delonier's uh, season coming to a halt? Um, Marc-Andre played awful. Um, I hate it's not like I know one of those guys who likes to pin it on the quarterback but like at one point I was talking to him on the bench and he's like 
Yeah, they're playing a lot of 2-4, so the, the two halves, the two defensive halves are dropping. So he calls a play where he sends his slot on a five-yard out and throws it, kind of like without even making the read, just throwing to the spot. And if two and four are dropping, that means that one or five is shooting underneath that five-yard out. Mm -hmm. And predictably, it was, uh, it was picked off. Um, and it, that was just symptomatic of the kind of night that, that Marc Andre had. Um, I was pulling for the guy. Actually, I was, I was really hoping to see Clinkers, some new blood in the finals, some non-you guys in the finals for once. Um, but that, that's uh, not how that worked out. I go back to their game last week, Clinkers, and they were playing uh, balls deep. And the score was well in, in place. Like they weren't going to lose that football game, gentlemen. And Clinkers, uh, two weeks ago, I beg your pardon, and Clinkers just crushed them. Like, crush yeah. them. And I said, karma will come back to bite them. Do you, do you want a false report from Simon Dajani? Absolutely. Go I think we're going to start doing that. False news from Simon Dajani. More on that later, by the way. But for now, uh, so Simon Dajani told me, and I'm reporting what he told me. This isn't my opinion for those people uh, for whom that is unclear. He, Simon Dajani told me that Marc Andre told him when there was a bit of time left in, in uh, the Simon, Simon Says game, Marc Andre said to Simon, "Hey, so double finals. You're going to the finals, and we're going to the finals." Marc Andre hadn't played yet; his game hadn't started yet. And Simon's team was up by six with Gino DeFazio with two plays on the on the three yard line. More on that later. Um, but instead, Marc Andre is not going to the finals. Coming in uh, a little cocky, he missed a lot of deep passes uh, early, and then later late in the game, just just resorting to so, sort of. Uh, Quick, quick titch, guys, quick twitch memory. That, but that's why I wasn't surprised of this outcome because Marc Andre went into this. First off, he was insulted that he wasn't an E one. Yeah, maybe win more games next time. Yeah, maybe he was insulted that he wasn't an E one. Well, what did he say? Who, now we're gonna who's win. laughing? <laughs> we're gonna win E two, no questions asked. I'm like, okay, guy, we'll see. Well, well I mean, we we, we won't have questions final. to ask him because. He won't be on the field for the interview no, know, after winning a championship. So there's no questions asked. So like that part is true. I was like, okay, guy, relax. You have you still have to play the game. There's some solid players in Div E2 that, that well, are in the same E2 similar situation. The uh, they could have been in E1 but made it to E2 because of whatever algorithm Eagle used. And, and honestly, I feel like his overconfidence was his downfall. And it was hilarious that it happened to him because he's been overconfident since the beginning. He thought that E2 would be a breeze. Yeah, okay, he made it to the semis, but he lost. So, I mean, how does that make you feel, guy? Are you going to talk a lot of trash next time, or are you retiring from yeah, football? Yeah, he probably will retire. All right, Jesus. so Brewers, closer game. They lose to Blackouts 26-18. Um, that game, game started off 12 uh, Blackouts looked really flat. Yeah. Um, Brewers actually looked, looked pretty good to start, but then uh, Jeff Lefebvre, um just resorted to the same plays no matter what the defense was doing. Julien Lachance is really good, man. I had a chance to talk to him after the game. He's a really good guy. Um, got a chance to hear his thoughts on on his team. Got a chance to hear uh, his, his uh, about his uh, what he thinks about the moving forward to the finals. And it's always cool when a new team makes the finals because they're not aware of like the whole road trip production and so on. Yeah, uh, mesmerized. So it's going to be cool to see. But this they were even missing guys this week. Like like Cristiani wasn't there. So he, he relied heavily on Alex DeLille, on Matthew Ferrante, on, on Ryan Vanslet. Uh, Vanslet, of course, by now, like, we know he's more than just his rating. And if we have to know how player. good he is. So um, I'm surprised that, that he, his stat line isn't bigger than it is. No, but he was, like, it, what doesn't show here, uh, Stefano, is, like, though, like, he made important catches. He kept the ball, he okay, kept the I chains moving. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, you know, they, they don't track first downs yeah, and that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, and... He was he was rushing, if I believe he was rushing. Yeah, because he could he could have easily had the same type of game that Alex Delil had. Yeah, yeah. And he's just Alex Delil had the better sure. matchup. Yeah, okay. And, and Julien Lachance. So Julien I guess Lachance played. So, so, so they respected Ryan Vazlet and put their better defender on him. So that's why he yeah. didn't have as much of an impact as Delil. Yeah. And 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 Julien Lachance had uh, he played tackle, and he said that it was just hard to adjust to FPF. As we all know, it's not the same game. And, yeah. Uh, but now he's sort of hitting a stride. And I've been a fan of blackouts since we played them early in the season. I really like them. I've been a fan of Brewers for a while. So, like, it was a tough game for me because, uh, I, you know, you want both teams to win in this case. But uh, really happy for blackouts and, and proud of Brewers and the progress they've made in, in such a short time. 
I saw the Blackouts play not too long ago in the first round of the playoffs, and uh, they had a feisty affair because they they were up against um, uh, Chalk and Barracudas, and that was you know they were down in that football game actually twelve nothing. But they were down twelve nothing. Yeah, this game too. yeah. So they they've had some. Uh, so they're downfall. like a second half type of team. It's more like a second half of the first. They half. C- they tend to come out flat in games. Yeah, for whatever reason. Okay. So in this case, though, as you talk about starting off flat for blackouts, uh, they're playing Mambo, which is a team w- full of wealth of experience for playing the yeah, NBA Finals. It. They can ill afford, I think, guys, to be down twelve nothing. They won't catch up. No, nah, no, nah, Mambo. Ma- you have to with, with Mambo. You have to go stride like point for point. Because the, their their offense is is ridiculous. Like even he, he, we know Nicky Papich has a, an incredible receiver, but now he's growing as a quarterback in E two, and he's got some guy the receiver core. He's got Tim Horner, he's got uh, Joe Cano. He's I don't got understand Pappas. how Joe Cano gets open deep. He caught a he caught because a nobody post thinks over he would shoulder. run. No one thinks he's going to catch. Nobody he, thinks he's pretty he's quick. Run. He is, but people see him and like there's no chance this guy's going deep. He's probably going to be like a, a slant guy, and then he goes deep. Oh, he's wide open. He's waving his he's arms. He's going to show up in the finals with a t-shirt that's a slant guy. He should. Yeah, he should. I like the slant. All right, Mo, you ruined it. <laughs> Mo's not getting the game. Nope. Come on, Mo. So what's the key though in, in this football game for uh, blackouts? If they're gonna get this game, like, they, they have to like, score. Like I said, they just have to keep scoring. If, and honestly, if I they stop, if they get stopped, okay, once they might still have a chance, but if they get stopped twice, it's over. There's no chance of coming back after. Because Mambo is the type of team that will probably always constantly score. I'm curious about the the matchup of Ryan Vanslet rushing, um, rushing Nikki Papich. one That's of the guys who's a pu- like a pure enough athlete to actually shut him down. So that's gonna be fun to watch. I think I, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna be in the booth in that game actually. With uh, who? I'm well, I'm doing that game with Corey Lewowski. Doing it with Corey. Um, so we're closing out with E1. We're closing out with E1. Okay, so we have E1. I yeah, thought it was E1. you guys are in E1, and uh, we'll talk. The last about game is E1. What time is E1 game at? Last game. Last game. Last game. Oh, okay, right. that's eleven o'clock. That's yeah. the last game ten before Duns. Ten o'clock. Ten o'clock. Ten 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 ten. My bad. Last game before Duns. Yes, before we go to Duns, I'll be at Duns broadcasting actually with Stefano, so we might be there already. It's gonna be put, live. Put Mo there doing like a, as a, from an, on an like iPad. Yes, you know. Oh, we're gonna be live from Mo's. Skype. Uh, I think someone caught that ball. Anyway, so we look at this game though. Has it ever been done? Broadcast. So how's your chicken? Oh, look, there's been a five yard like completion. R- oh, so your order is ready. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, by the way, he broke that for 15 yards. Huh? Yeah. Step, pass me the catch. Please. Thank <laughs> you. Um, uh, the quarterback play. Who gives the edge to the quarterback play? Oh man. I mean, I, I give the edge to uh, Le, Le, it's Le Chance, no? I give it to Le Chance as well. Because Nicky Papich, yes, he's a great athlete, but he's not, We like I said, I don't know him as a quarterback. He's been growing, yes, but he's not a, a the, the type of guy that his main focus is quarterbacking. His main focus is defense and secondary quarterbacking. Because my question is, if Ryan Vanslet can neutralize him, then what can Nicky Papich do when he can't buy time? Throw it away. Will he though, or will he throw to the coverage? He'll probably he'll probably f- try. The Blackhawks defense is good, man. He and, he'll, he'll, he he always he would never be watch out for Michelle he, Hockey's mana. Uh, he he he's, he's got a rush. Ivan Ivan Hockey's mana. Yeah, my big problem. He's not Korean. As we I did said. not say Korean. I said Japanese. He's not Japanese. Obviously. Okay, now I know that. What um, is he? Did we ever figure out what he was? I know someone with the same last name. And where is he from? She is from. She I is think from. her family's somewhere from. Is the it Burundi? Caribbean Caribbean Islands, if not from the north, uh, from the North African section. Okay, of fair, fair. Continent. So, the thing is, is that he's Iv- uh, Ivan Hakizama is fast enough that he like. So most pocket quarterbacks don't care about fast rushers, but Ivan Hakizama is that fast that it actually will affect yeah. Julian uh, Lachance. And on top of that, um, he's tall, so it, it neutralizes the fact that Julian Lachance is you know like. About six foot two, yeah. So it does neutralize that a little bit. Whereas Nikki Papich can at least deliver the ball over Ryan over Ryan Vanslet. So that's an advantage there. Also, there's this like weird you thing that happens with these guys with with Joe Cano and and, and with Pettis. this whole this yeah. whole group of guys. Um, I don't know. I I feel like I mean we're not doing our picks just yet. Do not do that to them, okay? No, but like no, y- no. you don't see, do it, please. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. But like you know. Guys like uh, Joe Cano and and, and, and and that group, it's it's just frustrating that they're always in the finals. And I mean, frustrating in a positive way too, because like they're nice people, so I'm happy for them. But at the no, same they time, are nice people. I'm tired of seeing your faces. Oh, Eagle's been called. You got summoned. Uh, our high-rise right, elevator right. rang. 
Eagles on his way down. Mm. Yeah, Eagles. Uh, Taking a sweet all, time. Fine all the time, man. What happened, Eagle? Someone left their trunk open. Oh, not us. Was it us? Well, clearly oh, it's not us. You drive a black Ford, the Navy. Do no. you drive a black? You drive a black Ford. Ours in the tr- driveway, though. <laughs> Mo drives a black Ford. Yeah. For anybody that wants to slash Mo's tires, yes. it's a black Ford. De La Zara. So, I mean. Oh, Daniel L. Sorry. Also, for players listening, want to slash my tires because there's more of them. Yeah. I drive a black Ford. Yes. Yeah, Black Ford. <laughs> Eagle drives a black Ford as well. <laughs> yes. A nice it's expensive. an Uber black Ford. <laughs> a nice expensive And I drive Ford. a Toyota Prius. Yes. So, I mean, you can't, you can't hit a Prius. It saves the environment. Actually, what you need to do is find a Fiat 500L with an FPS yeah, sticker. I mean, yeah. that's, that's not definitely hard to find. one of our cars. I what it is right now. Are you sure it's one of our cars? I don't know. It sounds Could like it's a, they stole our stuff. All That's right, okay. let's talk about uh, E1 then. Uh, threat level midnight, Los Bandidos. Uh, Bandidos went 30 to 19, and PMS wins 18 6 over Bud Knights. Uh, which game wow. was the more surprising result for you? Part of my swag beating Bud Knights. It wasn't surprising. It um, was. Well, I mean, like, to be, they, they know each other, right? They played each other. Well, they played together. So I remember at one point, Stephen Harper saw it as standing in the middle of the field, like running a five yard hook, yeah. waving his hands like a wild man. Yeah. And Matthew Kilgen's just looking deep, looking deep, looking deep, and I, I, I keep saying, was this because he was playing from behind? No, no? Just, that's what he. That's okay. how. Because he usually plays, does that I, I when he plays from behind. I, I'm amazed that he doesn't turn the ball over as much for a guy who continuously throws downfield. <coughs> he takes too many shots. He took too many shots in this game. Uh, part of my take just played deep. They, they were they were giving up short short passes, and then eventually what happened was. Matthew Kilgen would scramble, and then someone would shoot down on Ma- uh, on on Stephen Harper's side, the snapper, and then that that read was no longer there. So, so once the safety blanket was out, you just then, then run there's no play. And and, and how, Kep- how does how Kep- does a guy Kep- like Cheyenne Stewart have a catch for six Sorry, yards? The water buffalo. Well, nobody because knows him as the water buffalo. Mo. Ask him. He's known as the water buffalo. No, no, he's known as Cheyenne. Put on the pole, please. Cheyenne Stewart knows the water buffalo. The yes eighth no. pole. Well, but only that, like like Sean Babin, one catch. Yeah. Lauren Foucault, one catch. Like Lauren Foucault is a like player. When you send three deep all, all the time, and it's yeah, Sean yeah. Babin, Lauren Foucault, and Cheyenne Stewart. Yeah, that's then true. it's not surprising that if the other team is just waiting for you deep, like. To me, Shane Stewart could have had seven catches for 45 yards, something like that. Like, like a game where he's more impactful, just moving the chains, but instead they're just continuously to put, looking to put up deep see, balls. That would, that would probably be more of Lone on Foucault, though. But that how wild. Well, that too. Like, I'm just saying, all, but like, all Shine of these guys, the I said in my article, actually, I yeah. said in my article that one, the, the guy they, they can look at to, to whom, whom the trees was Lone on Foucault, to your point, yeah. Stefano, but like literally it, it just it, it looked, because I was watching, you know, both games at the same time. So what it looked like every time I looked over was Matthew Kilgen either scrambling while looking downfield or looking downfield. But how wild is it that that PMS was a throw away from being ousted from the playoffs in f- in five overtimes against uh, Jean Guy, and here they are in the mm-hmm. finals. I mean, it's, it's not because they beat they beat one of the top teams in the division. Yeah, but they they gave they've them beat so two many of the lives. best defenses in the division. Yeah, they did. But Knights best defense out there. But best John Gee somehow the fifth, somehow the they, they they have an amazing defense. John well, Gee. but look, they, the thing is, part of my part of my swag hasn't scored more than eighteen points in the last two games. That's because so they had two of the strong defenses. Yeah. So like, the defenses actually did their part against yeah. Brad Evans. Yeah, and Brad Evans, to his credit, honestly, you know, that's not a bad satellite. Second, ha- second half, he's just he's just milking he's just milking the clock. That's the best thing. He stole that from Stephen Herpesod, who does that all the time. Yeah, Stephen Herpesod is deadly. Honestly, he's the worst quarterback to play when he has a lead. Honestly, he he could probably go a half with like a drive, with or, or two I don't max. Think he can, but two drives, yeah, he can, he can, two drives, he can yeah. That's what drive. I'm saying. Like he he like he'd use two drives to like the maximum amount of time, and like you you'd be left with like two minutes. And not much to do. So Brad Evans kind of took that. He figured that he has to melt the clock in order to solidify a win, and, and that's what happened. All right, so uh, Los Bandidos over a threat level midnight. Quickly here, guys, thoughts on this game? Hey, I, I expected this because Los Bandidos' team is incredible. They shouldn't – I don't know how they keep being in Division e. Eagle might have the answer to that. Eagle. All right. They fit. And, and the thing is, there was a lot of questions coming into the season about – uh, about Francis de Rocher, he, he wasn't an efficient quarterback early in his uh, FPF uh, career, but like he didn't even have to be in this game. Yeah, but the stat line doesn't make the, sense. The stat line also doesn't make sense. The stat line does not make sense. I will say it kind of felt a little bit. How does this? Maybe he has rushes. Go down to the rushes. He, he had two rushes. Pick sixes, perhaps. Pick was sixes. There was a pick six. There was one pick six, right? One, two, one three, pick four. Six. 
Yeah, two rushing two touchdowns. Two rushing, okay, pick, yeah, pick okay, six, makes six, more six, sense now. Oh, two points. rushing touchdowns, that's it, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, so that makes sense because I saw they have 35, 30 points, 30 points, and the guy has a touchdown and two INTs with six of 11. <laughs> like, I don't understand. But, yeah, honestly, that's surprising. I thought that the offense would be better than this, to be well, honest. Well, they started as five ah, players. Of course. Um, and I think that's where a lot of the Francis De La play running plays came from. Yeah, but sense. it just in general looked like like the games we used to see him play, just constantly sh- buying time and so on. Uh, Look, up was the game rushing in this game, recording two sacks. <laughs> this stat line looks weird, man. It does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Vincent <laughs> Benjamin like has 55 yards that's receiving. Like, that's like an opening and drive Francis De La Chais has 47 yards pass. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like All drive. right. So right. he must have gotten sacked many times. Then. So looking at this game now, PMS against Los Benitos. Twice. Twice. Um, are we going to see these two quarterbacks Eagle throw up some by pitiful numbers when the final line is? I think up? that's what Brad Evans wants. I think Brad Evans he wants, wants to, to be so terrible. He wants to be ugly. He wants to be an ugly quarterback battle. Yeah, and Brad Evans like wants he, that. Like as ugly as he looks when he's wearing his Hawaiian shirts. I mean, that's what he wants the game. I mean, Hawaiian be. shirts are nice. Some of them. Some no. of them are a bit flamboyant. Really, there's, really? A, there's a non-flamboyant Hawaiian shirt. Put in a poll. Question is, are Hawaiian shirts yes, flamboyant? That, that one's, please. Put that in the poll. <laughs> or is Stefano no, Amora. Is there, such, is there such a thing as, as a flamboyant? and non-flamboyant. Non-flamboyant Hawaiian no, no, t-shirt. The answer, it's yes and, or fire Stefano. Are the two, <laughs> two answers, as always. Oh, boy. Eagles. Eagles. Eagle, Let's do go. it. Come on now. Stop giggling by yourself, man. It's not normal. Eagles, don't worry. You only have 20 hours to work on Sunday. Okay, so... Uh, you think Brad Evans has to muck it up then and really make I it think so. difficult? Because the, the firepower of Los Bandidos is, is, the, is impressive. Uh, like the way Brad Evans has an edge in his game is if it's a terrible quarterback battle because, like Pete's just legit said before, I was going to say it because he's a thief. Uh, okay. The, I was going to say that the, the offense on Los Bandidos are, are they're too overpowered. Like They have so much skill that you're going to have to have a terrible quarterback performance in order to compete because I, I don't think – Pardon my. If this is actually like score for score, which probably won't be, mm-hmm. but if it comes down to scoring all constantly, I mean, part of my swag is a lot less likely to do so than Bandidos. Can Frankie Scalzo uh, contain Francis De though? That's gonna be tough. That's a tough matchup. Frankie, tough. S- Frankie Scalzo is a, a solid rusher, but he's not a shutdown rusher. But the defense is good. Guy, he always goes for the flag, and then he contains it. well. Yeah, he does. But Dude. like. Francis De La Chies is a guy who breaks contained constantly. But the time. defense is good, but my only question for PMS's defense is the underneath stuff. And when you look at the games that they've had in the playoffs, on fourth down, on third and long, they gave up first downs. I go, I, I say to myself, guys, like, what are you not seeing and, out and, there? And it's it's so hard to stop that slant from from Vincent Benjamin because you don't want to give up the bomb touchdown. So the DBs yeah, instantly retreat, and it's it's open constant. Like I honestly think Francis De La Chies could. Could hit um, on every series of downs. He could hit uh, that slant once per per three or four downs. Like because uh, because the, the team is always 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 going to look to try and take the deep ball uh, away from from uh, fr- from uh, Benson Benjamin. But he's just as deadly catching the ball in space. All right, Division D two, uh, Buffalo Wild Wings crush Finessers. Shocker. And that is a shocker. No, this is big. This is more Stop. shocker. Dave. Why, you, Why uh, do you hate them? I don't hate them. I like them a lot. I don't think so. I do like them a lot. They I, called the game on like five minutes left. Yeah, they did. Or oh, ten minutes left rough. to be exact. Uh, Why yeah. you shocking infantry thirty two twenty five? But that's not the shoreline. That's the shoreline. Not is, uh, <laughs> shoreline is uh, is some choice words. <laughs> I mean, okay. We'll get so to PC, that one. Let's, let's, one. let's just see. PC, I'll so, let you uh, go ahead and so answer. Last week, I came in with a story. Um, that was told to me by Commissioner Acting Simon Dajne. Acting Commissioner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Acting terribly like... No, Nicolas Cage is great. What's the opposite of Nicolas Cage? Eagle. Well, well, the opposite of Nicolas Cage is Nicolas Cage in a movie that is not good. Con there we go. <laughs> so, Con like, Air. there's good <laughs> Nicolas Cage great. and there's bad Con Nicolas Yo, Cage. Yo, Con Air was great. No. You take that back. Gone in 60 Seconds is better than Con Air. Eh. <laughs> It is. What's the one with the bees? That's uh, oh the oh there we go, <laughs> um the the what's it called the the wicker man the yeah. wicker man, so yeah. I took For every kick ass there's a wicker man in Nicolas Cage's career. I took I told a story about Sean Samarjan, um that was told to me by the commissioner, which I've now learned every time he tells me something is not true. He said that Sean Samarjan admitted to playing football for many years after initially telling the league that he had not. 
Um, it it turns out comments. this isn't true. This is the not the latest in the Simon's lies. He once told me Alexandre Joubervel uh, played quarterback for Catabin or or was on the roster as quarterback for Catabin. When I told him, when I spoke to him about that, he said, "Well, I was in a camp in high school with Catabin, so it's not the same thing." Um, so Simon friends. tends to get details wrong. I should know better. That's on me. Um, I feel like I'm apologizing for someone else's mistake. That but you uh, that you blew out, yeah. yeah. But like, exposed. also, I'm not that hard a person to reach. If someone has any questions, what I think I said, feel free to contact me. Rory Smarjan did, by the way. Uh, I spoke to him, explained my stance. A lot of what we do on the show, if I pull back the curtain for a second, is comedy for detailed, serious analysis. You have the articles. We don't want to have two versions of the same no. thing. No. And as Pete was explained, I just ate a timid. So yeah, day. live on the show. But you can just eat after the show. I mean, you know, but then after they'll be stale. There'll be something. You want? I don't. I'm good, brother. You guys are haters, huh? <laughs> no, we just... Listen, Mo and I are older. It's hard for us to maintain oh, that these beautiful good. bodies. More mine than Mo's, but you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the good. thing is... Right. The thing is... Uh, yeah, so... Nope. There you go. I, I, I did go to some... I did go to air with something I believed to be true because I didn't think there was a reason for Simo to lie about that. So that's weird. But that's all. So in theory, the uh, Sean and Rory should be teaming up against uh, Simo then. Simo was called Rory slow, which also yeah, bothered exactly. him. Exactly. Yeah, that's yes. why. I and wanted. Rory okay, so challenged him to a race. So while <laughs> you win, win, come on, who's not going to be Simo? Okay, so while you win this game, wrong, here, gentlemen, so. uh, did they have their championship game one game too early? Because no, because Levo, you are good, man. Like, <laughs> how many times are they going to say this? They're a ridiculous team. No, nah, Levo, you came to play. I watched that game. And uh, honestly, uh, they 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 matched everything that Sean and the infantry would were running away with all season. They they just they shut it down. They did, like you can see, Sean usually spreads the ball out. He only had like he kept going to Mike Collard, which was a snapper for like two yards a, a catch, and then he ran up on the ball. And he was looking for Rory Smarjan, but he wasn't open. Rory Smarjan, yeah, Rory was covered. Yeah. That's why he hit him Do we twice. Do call him the glorified cheerleader, Mike Collard? Someone called him that. Vinny Galano called him that. Oh yeah, yes, Vinny Galano called him that. Yes. I feel but like you just stirring the pot there. I Mo. beg your pardon. I no, wait. Are you sure that Vinny Galano? Yeah, sure. Vinny, Vinny Galano and, and not Sean Abram. You know, uh, I can't. I, I, I can't send. Pardon, though, I can't though. spend my post-coital Sunday mornings sending messages to FPF players. Yeah, don't worry. If they do, can, they can reach me at Mocha19. All right, infantry. I beg your pardon. Was against balls deep, and this is the division that they yeah, played. Yeah, because right. you named a Div E team. Yeah, I got a Div D team. Because Ledoux, Jeremy Ledoux, got rocked by the balls deep rusher, mm. and I said, "Boy, Karma's gonna come back to bite these guys in the backside because he went for two when they were up by forty points." And I thought in this game, Le Voyou, which I watched from the end zone, they were the aggressor. They were hungry. They looked like the team that was going to sacrifice their bodies like there was an atomic bomb in front of them to get that football back in their possession. And infantry had their game plan well executed, but it just felt like they were a step below or step behind the flow of what the Voyou had on, on What Monday. would you do if there was an atomic bomb? I just run away as far as I can. Bend over and kiss your ass goodbye. Yep. I would just pack a giant bag of narcotics and get as far as I could. And That's almost the same thing Mo said, just without the narcotics. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you're, you're more likely to die because you're gathering the narcotics and just running away very yeah. But wait, is it landing on you or mm. near you? Well, no, like you, you see, it's got the timer like in movies, right? So, therefore, <laughs> I know how many times okay. I got to go to the SDQC, how much time I got to, to, to go yeah, to the SDQ. Just imagine the lineup. <laughs> I mean, and I they like close a lot early <laughs> too. <laughs> You're gonna have to like go. Like but I, in my mind, I'm the only one who saw the, the one. And okay, okay. So basically, it, Peace is the only one that saw the timer. Yeah, exactly. For the atomic bomb that nobody else knows. And his plan hit. is and to not tell anyone. And say fuck bunch all of y'all and run away. He's yeah. gonna say fuck all y'all. I'm taking all the supply and I'm dipping. And yeah, that's high. that's Peace's <laughs> plan right there. I'm uh, a nice guy. What can I say? So um. But yeah, Vincent Legionnaire is good, man. He is. Um, we've talked a lot about Pierre Alexandre but like throughout the season, Vincent Legionnaire's become as much of a threat for Sebastien Delair. These are good. Live while you are good. Um, I'm not surprised by this at all. In fact, I don't know if I picked them or not, although I likely picked the infantry because they lost, and that's what happens when I pick a team. Uh, Eagle, how's, do we have the stats on that? On the picks? Yeah. Obviously. I, I do. Who's I'm going to save them for when we do picks. Okay, great. Why would Perfect. you do such a thing? Well, All right, that, that so makes sense, actually. Wild Wings, Hammer, Finesters. Uh, That's surprising. That's surprising. Not really, though. I mean, we know... We well, know. Mind you, mind you, they, Finesters thought 
that the Buffalo Wild Wing quarterback for this game here, which is the normal quarterback, Trish Ronaldis, was not going to be the quarterback because who they played early in the year was not this guy. That's and true. and uh, Bacalani said, man, we didn't realize this is the quarterback because he wasn't there in our first encounter, and we got exposed by him. Well, see, Bacalani told you the PG version of what he told me. He legit told me Ryan Carew just had an awful game, and that's, I'm that's sorry, just – said what? The awful, awful. Yeah. Oh, he threw five interceptions. Five interceptions Shocker. from Ryan Carew. Like, really. Against, okay, yes, they have some solid defensive players, Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah. But besides but the thing Guillaume is, Fontaine. The thing is, they're, they're, Buffalo Wild Wings aren't a super athletic defense. They're, they're a good schematic I, defense. There's something about that team that when their opponent sees them, they just underestimate them entirely, and then it just that never works out. Well, they're, they're, honestly, they're smart players, um, and and we saw that we saw that in this game. We saw them just jumping in the lanes, and Ryan Roof just literally like he didn't adapt, and he he, he was just um, locked into what this he wanted is, to this do. This is and poor. Well, yeah, he's got that's, he's got a tank rough. of an arm. That's all he really it is, does. Right? His there's, arm there's, is insane. Tanks don't have speeds. It's, it's just one speed. Most power. Away. No. And that's what he did. He just fired away, and that's that's what happened with him. And he got burned for five ints. Yeah, he got that. That that was rough. Honestly, I want. I I would have just loved to see his reaction at the end of that game, but I didn't. Well, Bakalani said, "Look, we got our first playoff." Yeah, Bakalani's like, it's, yeah, it's a building block for us to." Yeah, Nero Shiresh is like, "But what do you want me to tell you?" Like Ryan just ru- struggled, and it is just that's it. And then he left <laughs> after he cheered on his teammate that was playing. All well, right, his Buffalo co-worker. Wild Wings are playing Levi. Yeah, uh, is this a mismatch? I want to say yes, but we just saw. With and the I Buffalo just said that everybody <laughs> underestimates the Buffalo Wild Wings. But I don't feel like Live you estimate any anyone. They don't. They, they just, just go like there to play and try they to do ball what out. They do. Yeah. And if it works out, it works out, and it does most of the time. So I, what's the, what's I, the I don't see for it. Buffalo Wild Wings to get this victory over Live you They need to trick uh, Sebastian Delar. They need to uh, similar to what they did to Ryan Roof. The problem is that Sebastian Delar um, reads the field a little bit better. Uh, then Ryan Kru- Ryan Kruf, the thing is, he he tends to be a first read quarterback from what I've seen. Um, so if his first reads are there, you're not intercepting. You're never getting to the ball because if his release is so quick and and the ball is so and so hard. Uh, but Sebastian Delaire is a guy who's incredibly patient. He's the amount that this dude's improved in such a short span is is awesome. Like we we've talked about like a guy like Marc Andre Desonier improving quickly. We've talked about uh, you know Alex Holowax's improvement, but Sebastian Delaire has been very very impressive in a short period of time, man. Um, so that's that's where I think the key is going to be is is if they can find ways to confuse and master coverage. And I think Buffalo Wings are a team that can do that. See, uh, you have you have solid point, Pete. But in my opinion, I feel like Buffalo Wild Wings has to slow down the game on offense. Yes, Let's because their yeah. thing is Tristan Ronaldo is like, okay, snap the ball, going deep. It works. It doesn't. You can't do that. If I you are going to pick up on that quickly, they're going to probably intercept you. So if you just slow down the game, you're more likely to beat Le Voyou than all we, than trying to match them score for score. Yeah, uh, Eagle, who's on this broadcast? Is it me? Uh, I want to say yes. So can you do something? Boy, no, it's not you. Who is it? This broadcast sure. is... Oh, this broadcast is... Actually, this is our first ever francophone broadcast with François Martin and Marc-André Desaulniers in the booth. It's Because both teams are francophone, so we said, you know what, we've never done this before. Let's take this opportunity to try something new. Oh, man. I hope they have experience together. They don't. It's going to be amazing. Oh, oh man. But... There's oh, a technically, they did boy. do a podcast. They did do a podcast, oh, which is boy. very different from a bar- broadcast, by the way. Uh, luckily, it ends the same way. way. Luckily, they're working with myself and Mo, two seasoned professionals. Yeah. Where's my fist bump? Yeah. There sorry, we go. sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm just. I'm <laughs> the just hell? If you um, replay my eyes when, when PZ said, hey, Marc Andre and Francois are working together, my eyes just went, what? Honestly, like, we're trying. It would have been you, Mo, but. <laughs> I know. But I'm hanging we're trying, you abandon now. us. We're I trying did. to we're trying to build our database too. Uh, we're getting more and more teams getting, like the That's year true. that the year that I had to do seven broadcasts was I was, sick. was the year. Yeah, you were saying, it wasn't was your fault. Sick. But I'm just no. saying it made me realize we need to start training people. So um, yeah. definitely. Uh, oh, we did. Yeah. Ray Han Star Wars. And, oh no, we trained Brett, Brett Podkins. Been, been, uh, Ray Han Star Wars. Uh, Simon tried it once. That was fun. Simon was terrible. Yeah. Jim Collectors did a great job last year. So did Terry Tam. Yeah, uh, Terry Tam uh, is playing, so he won't be in the booth this year. But so who's who's worse, Ray Starwire or Simon Dagenet? 
Mm. Man, seems pretty bad. I think Ray was. I actually put on the bo- poll, please. Uh, who was a far worse play by play broadcaster? Ray, Ray Starhorn or Small Dash? I will take the opportunity to say, if you do want to come help us with anything media related, send us an email, send us a Facebook message. We'll be happy to get back to you. Facebook's easier for me. Please don't send me an email to Flight Bless. I never check yeah. it. Um, he also doesn't have notifications for Facebook, so either way, you're screwed. I do check that though. Do you though? Yes. Yeah, didn't seem that. All right, on to the next final. We got. I waited. Uh, I, I told you. I told you. Facebook I don't response. accept those those types Facebook of pictures. Facebook response. Yeah, don't set minutes. Uh, minutes. Those kinds of pictures. Half no, stars against that was Al-Lod. your thing. Those kinds of pictures. That was your thing with your fucking <laughs> smoker's Al-Lod's lung look or whatever the fuck that was. Steak. That was terrible. Uh, Thirty-one. Was it 19. cauliflower steak? No steaks. Is Mo still? I feel like Mo's talking. We're just talking. Yeah, no. It's my bad, Mo. 31-19 victory by Outlaws over Super Saiyans and Half Stars easily beating Bird Gang 39-20. Steph and I were, were in attendance for both of these games. Well, for the half-star game, that is. And uh, I'll tell you where the game turns. Steph, you may or may not agree with me on this. Half, uh, Bergang, INT, Angela Langbert late in the first half. They have two, if not three, plays inside the 10. Couldn't score, and I felt that deflated their confidence because had they had the lead at halftime, Steph, I think it kind of changes their mindset going to yeah. the second half. You're right. That's, that's correct. Also, they, they had uh, some inner turmoil. Which was kind of not didn't help, but that was pretty much when the game was over, though. But that's that's so this I mean, team. This team is they're so. I mean, whenever you'd like to change it, Eagle, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, like maybe pay attention to the show. Like, yeah. stop yeah. playing Pokemon. Go. We did not no, say that. We, we He's we literally no talking Bird about gang. It's Bird Gang, half here. a stars. My bad. Is it? Shocking. Are you playing Pokemon Go? I was not. Apparently, they have some special event at Jean Drapeau Park. Yes, they do. See, September twentieth to twenty second. There you go. You see, I told you. Anyways, anyway, carry on. Nerds. But uh, yeah, uh, this game. You know what? But they, that's it. Their, their emotions ride high when they're doing well, and they turn on each other often when it isn't going well. And but they, they, they it sucks were. to see because like like they're, they're. I was very impressed with Bird Gang all season long, you know. So it, it, I actually thought we might see them in the finals. Um, Half the stars are good but beatable, and I thought this was the team to do it. They they it they, they had everything like Mo said that last drive when they had three plays left to try and in score the first half, yeah. in the first half. They would have been up. At least eighteen, twelve, you know, and, and that would have changed. That would have changed momentum. They would have had. They would have got twenty to twelve. Twenty? Yeah, because they were up fourteen, twelve. Oh, yeah, they were up fourteen, twelve. They would have been up by eight. They could have been points. up by three by nine points. Yeah. yeah. So that 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 honestly was a huge turning point. Bird Gang stuck with them though. I mean, I must say they did. They they. But then after unfortunate turnovers happened, and then that's when Andrew Langber just took it took over. Like, he had his turnover early. And, and uh, they couldn't cash it in. And, 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 and they caught up for that. And then uh, Anthony Lazara, unfortunate uh, interceptions. But, uh, you know, they, they happened at uh, Andrew Langber. Usually he thr- he thrives and uh, he, he capitalizes on these kinds of opportunities. And that he's, was just really, he's really good at uh, biting on what the quarterback wants to do. So unless you can look him off, he's great DB, especially in the second half. Once he's digested your, your offensive playbook, you either need different looks or you need to be able to look him off. And Anthony Lazaro just not experienced enough to do that. All right, Outlaws, uh, easy win over Super Saiyans, 31-19 in the Battle of the Oranges. Um, that too, man. I felt bad for that. Yeah, I you know felt what? Bad Jordan Hart didn't get in rhythm. It was not his fault. And, uh, it wasn't his fault, though. Most of well. his guys were dropping. Yeah. He, he, uh, we talked today, and he's like, he told me he was still pretty salty about, about the, the loss. Did you give the look? Yep. Well, it was by text, so maybe. Yep. I mean, maybe uh, he looked yeah. at his phone like that. I imagine. I imagine he did. But you know what? Um, the, the Allies got off to a flying start early on, and it felt like they had the energy burst that, that was lacking with Super Saiyans. Uh, Kevin Kusai was just on his guys. And guys, l- we cannot allow these guys to get back in this football game because there was an opportunity in the fourth down, which Super Saiyans did convert on their first drive. And Kusai is like, guys, this, is b- this has got to be better defense than what we're throwing out here. And even uh, the Water Buffalo, Cheyenne Stewart wasn't happy with some of the play calling defense, but they got it corrected. And it went back to being a rhythm offense for them on that side of the football, and they just controlled tempo and didn't really uh, relent at all. Uh, at the end of the game, Jordan, uh, I know that it w- it, the loss w- wasn't really his fault. I mean, he, he did what he had to do. It's just his receivers were having kind of a rough outing. Not Jared. Jared was uh, unlike what Terry says. But Jared actually made us believe that he could actually catch the ball instead of just throw it. Uh, but Troy and uh, – and, uh, Tom Gatehouse, they they had these drops, and it just it, it 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 deflated Jordan. After the game, he's like, you know what? Doesn't matter what it is, the loss always falls on the quarterback's shoulders. 
Of course. And I'm like, well, yeah, you know, that's you how you feel, but no, that's but I, not I really what until, happened. Until I started throwing an FPF, I didn't understand that. I w- I'd always be like, no, it's, you know, I would talk to my quarterbacks yeah. and like, no, it's not your fault. But like, when you're a quarterback, you legitimately feel there's a million things you could have done differently. No, I know, but I'm like just saying it wasn't. It's, it's stronger than it's you. It's how right. you feel, but it wasn't really the yeah. case, you know. But right. in the end, like you said, just being the quarterback, you, you feel like you it, it comes down to you. No matter what happens, whether you win or lose, it's always on you. And uh, that's it. It was tough. It was tough though for Jordan. They 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 could have they could have made it, but uh, you know, unfortunate drops. And uh, then after you have Stephen Herpesaw's uh, whole uh, technical aspect of the game where he mm-hmm. slows down the clock, and he's unlike. Most quarterbacks, for some reason, when it's a third and short, he doesn't go deep. He gets that first down, and then they just. You know, well, the reason w- the reason why a lot offense. of quarterbacks do go deep on third down in FPF is because FPF is a fourth is a four down league. Yeah, it's no, it's like, like second down. Yeah, I know. There's not, a free they, play they, for you to go not, deep. There's punting, well, but you shouldn't really punt. And also defensively, you're expecting them to try and get exactly. the first down, right? So, so the, eight yard completions are going to be open. Yeah, yeah. All right, so here's the the fascination. We have a Langberg against Harapasad. Herpesize. That's gonna be a good game, man. Yeah, I think it's might be a the best shitty game. 12-12 tie early but in the season. Sepp brought up a good point, though, right? Harper is gonna want to slow this game down to uh, to a real like Buddhist like mentality, right? Slow down, relax, enjoy life. For See, I is. wouldn't do that. Harper Sides are just so proficient. Um, Outlaws have an explosive offense. I think I think he's gonna he's gonna want to score early and often. And once his team gets the advantage by getting an interception, so once they're up by more than the score, then we're gonna see him just. Just slow it down. Go down to first gear and just drive drive the game down into the ground. Does Kevin Smuno have any influence in this game of knowing how he's played with the Outlaws in years past? But Heaven Stars pretty much play the same defense they all the time. They just execute incredibly well. But I I wouldn't be surprised if Kevin Smuno does make plays and then stares down Kevin Cousay. Oh, man, Cousay was just... That would be fantastic. Oh, and Kevin Cousay is going to be like a turtle in the shell. You know? oh, good, uh, a turtle in a diner. Gentlemen, uh, he's neck bringing dana. food for you guys on Sunday. He was nice. Yeah, what kind of food? Uh, you need to tell him now on the is screen. Copper, oh, we have to. T- is he watching? Yeah, he's watching. He said, "Hey, I don't know what they want." Keith, I go, "I don't know what they want because I won't be there for a while." So, what do you guys want? Tell Kevin Cusay on TV, please. Don't yeah, be shy, guys. I don't know. Eagle, what do you want, want from Kevin Cusay for? Uh, What's something that's very difficult for him to have a good finals? That is awful. That's, that's terrible. What kind of food do you want, Eagle? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait. Can I ask for something very specific? I want for him to not wear the neck dana. <laughs> that's impossible. That, that, that's, no, that's, 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 that's like the uh, Optimus Prime uh, heart. You know, that has to happen. It's so part of his right, man. So, well, what do you want him to bring? Because you're not I, much of a I'm foodie. not there. Uh, I'm not All right. But well, what do you want him to bring? Is it, it's a different question. I, I, you're, you're, you could still enjoy what he brings. It'll be left over. I will say he needs to bring me a gluten-free granola bar. Oh, uh, really? He's going to do it. He probably will. He's going to give you a box of them. Bar. What about you, Peace? Uh, let's see. What's a city I haven't been to in a long time? Germany. Seattle. Seattle? Oh, give me a Pete's Coffee from Seattle. That would be great. Thanks. Huh. Perfect. Uh, I would take a... Uh, 2% commission on any house sale from him? Exactly. What he said. Wait, is he real estate agent? When it comes to... I am. But when it comes to food, I would say I would like uh, vanilla ice cream from cows in Nova Scotia. The cows made the ice cream? So the well, cows it's called cows. It's legit called cows. No, it's it's called called cows. cows. Oh, okay. I've heard of it. I've heard of it. Yeah, it's I, I, I just I had a whole yeah. cartoon thing yeah. happening in my brain. Is the well, weirdest part about this whole thing that my request is probably the most realistic? Which is what? You wanted a gluten-free granola bar. He from? wants a coffee from Seattle. Yeah. You want ice cream from Nova, Nova Scotia. Scotia. And I want him to not wear his neck down. Yeah, but you didn't ask for Impossible. food. Impossible. <laughs> Impossible. Okay, put on the poll, please. What is most likely to happen for Kevin Cousay? Will he get list of four options: the neck data, the ice cream, the coffee, or the tea? In my uh, gluten free granola bar. What's I'm pretty most sure that the Nova Scotia ice cream is going to be a winner. He can go down, and get back here in time for kickoff. He would. Okay. Um, other I keys. Like this question, so I'm use That's it. a fantastic. Okay, other keys in this football game. I, I look at half the stars and they have some pretty decent ballers max burrow being one of them and he impressed now, me a half lot. a stars roster their offense is insane well, they, uh, they yeah. have a loaded offense though. if they don't have kevin schmuda making the jump balls they have max burrow if they don't have max burrow they have noah groper you know if they don't have Noah groper there's always cory walaski he's always open like 15 yards on the field and for Corey's, some reason cory's so quick for a big dude honestly he snaps the ball he's already five yards on the field yeah it's it's uh it's impressive I don't understand how that happens as I keep getting slower as I lose weight. Makes no sense to me, Corey. 
it's, it's, it, it's the Toon Squad t-shirt he wears. That's what he told me. <laughs> it has yeah, to be. The Toon Squad t-shirt he wore gives him the speed that he needs. All right. So, Division C, KGP wins 41-38, 39 over Keyport Lock. And the Mercs Man, KGP, win 34, what a run. Well, what a run. Keyport Lock had some guys last minute unable to make the game. That's unfortunate. Um, I don't have the freedom to report why because I don't have all the information. Uh, well, I mean, you could go Simone's way. And <laughs> just easy, make something up. Well, I mean, now. that guy, he has a sore foot. Jeff Rosenblatt uh, had to play defense. Yeah, and that doesn't work out. Guess who Phil Cutler picked on? Jeff Rosenblatt. That's right. Really? Yeah. I would not have believed that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah look, and but I've been saying for a while that the KGP roster that's playing now is not the same KGP roster that was there to be in the season. So well, what a well, great Garfinkel run they've had, though. The best Their run has well, been incredible. Well, but Garfield is good. Uh, Hoppenmeyer is very good. Uh, get, a beast. Gab Domenico Matza had a great game on offense, which is amazing because he's a guy I've only known as a rusher. Um, and yeah. a very, very, very capable rusher. But oh, was he game, the matchup on uh, Jeff Rosenblatt? Well, it, no, it, it looks like Joseph Hopmeyer was. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think. I don't know. It, it, it's a lot of like zone concepts. Right? So okay, it's not yeah, one guy. Like, yeah, yeah, it makes like, sense. Like, oh, Jeff Rosenblatt's not. Rosen's not man in a do it up, right? <laughs> but you know what it came down to is extra points, right? It, it looks like that uh, KHP were five for six on extra points because they only missed one. Whereas uh, no. Keeper Lock, they missed on two from the looks well, of it. But I said last week that the thing is, is that um, KGP can put up points uh, every single week. So if you're not, and, and, and Keeper Lock, to their credit, like Jeff Rosenblatt offensively did what he had to do. They needed a stop. They're not going to get a stop with Jeff Rosenblatt on defense. It's just not going to happen. And, and as good as guys like Jeremy Anderson, uh, John Laristis, who had a monster game with three sacks, um, as good as these guys are, um, they're they're not gonna they're not gonna really be able to make a stop ma- you know make a stop on a Phil Cutler offense without without everyone um, and, and like we see it here like we see, we we see it in this game where Phil Cutler is the kind of guy where he'll move move forward and take a sack and, and run around and take a sack versus throwing an interception and he was able to protect the ball and that was. That literally, that's all he needed was just to keep scoring and keep getting extra points. To, to your point, all right. So, so basically, we always bet against KGP, and they beat three, two, and one. Hey, man, they they they've run their way through, man. They've they've they peaked at the right time. I saw them play at the end of the season, and here they are in the in the FPL finals once again. Good for them. All right, so the Mercs win over the Simon Says 34-33. And if you if looks could kill Simon Dagenet, I would make that like a statue that I would plant outside of Catalonia. Um. So the worst part is, I know, I know the stat line has two interceptions for Simon, but Simon yeah, was three for Gino. Simon actually didn't play badly. I thought he played very, very well. Uh, one interception was on a jump ball on fourth down, where on third down, uh, Nicholas Grappini, back of the end zone, didn't fully extend for a ball that was actually very well thrown by Simon. Like, tough catch, but well thrown for the location. Like, it had, it was, the ball was where it had to be. In order to get a completion, but he wasn't there. But he wasn't there, um, and then, um, so no. But Grappini got a deflection pick six as a rusher. Yeah, on Gino DeFazio. So they're up. Um, they're up in the first half, twenty to six. Right. Um, Simon has the ball with four plays left. Runs a post wheel concept. Justin Blanchard's wide open on the wheel. Isaiah Allard jumps into the lane, knocks it up. He's in the middle of the field. He knocks it up towards the right sideline. Because remember, Simone's not throwing over the middle of the field. He's throwing to the, to, to the sideline. He knocks it up, chases it down, dives and intercepts it, gives Gino DeFazio the ball at the two yard line with two plays left, and they get the score. Um, the game went to overtime, despite the fact that I thought. So uh, there was one ball that was. Sim- um, Gino DeFazio threw a hook front of the end zone, off the bounced off the receiver's chest into the diving arms of AJ Gomes, and then that w- that the next drive AJ Gomes got another interception. I was like, okay, Simo's going to go to the finals. Oh my god, it's going to happen! Um, and then instead, the game goes to overtime, and Simo's left crying. Uh, Gino just, just Gino DeFazio just played better than Simo. Just the day came calling for him, and that's it. And a great, great comeback route by Isaiah Lard in overtime. He went 45 degrees slant, up, and then back to the cone. So, he just able to make all those cuts before the rusher got to Gino DeFazio. Very impressive. The only guy I've ever seen do that before was Theo Gea. Just to show you the kind of athleticism it takes 
to run the route yeah, the way he ran it. Killed Simon Dagenet. Well, yeah, you could tell by just the way he was also he was matched up on that play on Alessandro Baratoni, who was a very good offensive player, but probably the weakest defender on Simon Says. Well, it, as you Simone can see says, on Simon's like, receivers, he went to Vadim Cherniak. Vadim had a monster time. game. He had he, 10 catches. And why is that? Because he probably saw Jose Alarda come at him and he couldn't even look down the field. So Actually, it wasn't, it it wasn't even that. Honestly, uh, Isaiah Lard was, was using a sort of a delayed rush to try and take away passing lanes. Yep. And, and Simon was literally waiting, waiting, waiting. Hit Vadim. Uh, okay, you won't find a guy who likes com complimenting Simon less than me. I'm telling you, I was very impressed with how he managed the game. Um, and he, he really, really, really... Uh, was very patient, which is not like him at all. Um, and then, like I said, the, 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 the first interception, instead of Simon says going into the halftime with, worst case, a 20-6 to six lead, that, that pick by Isaiah Lard, which was just inhuman, that, that allows the game to get to the point where, where Jim DeFazio has a chance to crawl back in it, and he does. Well, if I may say, we're very lucky to have Simon Dajani on the road show coverage. All right, so looking at You'll the You'll be finals. presenting trophies as commissioner-in-chief. Exactly, in chief. exactly. So the Mercedes against KGB champs, uh, two unique teams in their own distinctions. Uh, the long ball of KGP against the uh, Gino DeFazio well-trained troops. When you look at this game here, guys, is it going to be down to Isaiah Allard again to dictate the narrative of how this will unfold in the two halves? Uh, I s honestly, I do believe that Isaiah Lard will have a big impact on the on defense for uh, rushing Phil Cutler. But once again, Phil Cutler being a mobile quarterback, he is. But Isaiah Lard would be able to keep up with him. At what the games I've seen KGP, Phil Cutler is able to scramble and find and extend the play. But but, but, so but that's the thing is Isaiah Lard's best asset is his height and his ability to jump into passing lanes, and the fact that that, that Phil Cutler so rarely throws from just sitting in a pocket. I I think I feel it. If it doesn't look, you'll never completely neutralize Isaiah Lard, but the, 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 the best games he has are against guys like Simon Dagenet. And Phil Cutler is also tall, by the way. So yeah, he he's, he's taller than Simon, and he's going to be able to make throws that um, a shorter pocket quarterback wouldn't be able to make. Okay, so we look at this now. Um, Gino DeFazio has a cast of like 85 players on his roster. Yeah, who, who he had 11 players, including... Yeah. He even had a Carmen, uh, Carmen Poliche... Not, play, not not on the roster, but in uniform, helping call plays. So, who is his best six guys? Well, there's Isaiah Lard. There's Weir. Can you put the roster up there, Eagle, please? If you don't mind, on Eagle. the screen. Put it on the, uh, Kendall Myers. Yeah, Katie. Katie Myers, who uh, had a tough loss for NR. Okay, so look at this roster now as it pops up on, on the screen here for Mercenaries. I mean, you, you need a snapper, so Alex Blay. I yeah. mean, look, look at this roster, man. So Alex Blay, Darius. Yeah, Darius, David. Etienne, Gino, Isaiah, Jonathan Bardo, Justin Weir. Yeah, that's Kevin a lot. <laughs> like, who is How does his team fit in C, by the way? Yeah, but, like, who is his best six guys? Like, I, I don't know who he can put out there that you can say, hey, you know what? I can trust these six guys to. But, uh, well, the best side of the field. Eagle's point. Eagle, was that even in a mic? Or were you no, just being an idiot? Well, he was just being an idiot. Jesus Christ, man. How long have you been doing this? But I was scrolling. The thing <laughs> that's how long it took to scroll through the roster, but the thing is, Mo to, to Eagle's point that he made off microphone is he d he has more than six guys he can trust. He could put, like he can rotate in a full offense and defense basically. Like a hockey line almost. Yeah, but he can because because like Matthew Peacock's f much better than his rating, for example. Um, Alex Blay again is a guy who's a snapper who's going to contribute. Just better than his rating too. And he also has enough guys where if he thinks they're not good for that game, he can keep them on the bench the entire time. Do you think he'll prevent someone getting a t-shirt if they have like a bad game? No. <laughs> he will just not play them. Th it'll just be after the game. Like, like, I actually do why. If he goes to the team and he just misread a defensive play, do you think he gets a championship t-shirt? if they don't? That would only happen if Alexi Dubois can get on the field. Do we have enough championship t-shirts for the Mercenaries if they win? Because this roster is going to need like 20 of them. They'll probably have like 10 guys. Pretty sure they'll have 10 guys. How big a role does Garfinkel have? They have 12 game? qualified, so 12 get championships technically if they win. So let me go grab a t-shirt before they get it. All right, uh, how, qualif um, how much of an influence will Garfinkel have in this game? Well, if KGP are to win. Paymon or Garfinkel? Who, who will be the bigger influence? Paymon is the guy. Paymon, see, Paymon, I think, will bother. As, as counterintuitive as it is, I think Paymon will bother Gino DeFazio uh, more so than Isaiah Lart. Now, Gino DeFazio does get rid of the ball pretty quick, but... He also, his footwork is perturbed by rushers 
who are quick. And I, I think that Julian Payman is a whole other monster. They, there's fast guys and then there's Julian Payman. He's, right. he's ridiculous. Like they'll need, they, they, I think they need to go to silent counts and, and, and multiple counts to j- just to minimize his effectiveness in the game. Uh, although, he, to be honest, he stares at the ball and he takes off the second it leaves the, 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 the snapper's right. hand. Um, look, these are two great rushes, but in this game, the way the quarterbacks play, I believe that Julien Pema will have a bigger impact than Isaiah Lard. Steph, quickly, any thoughts? Uh, yeah, Julien Pema, not taking anything away from him, but he, he doesn't really show up on the receiving end of the ball, unfortunately. And I feel like this is going to come down to the offenses more than the defenses. So I feel like Jonathan Garfinkel is going to have to have a bigger impact on this game than Julien Pema in order for KGP to win. Okay. Because, yeah. Sorry, Div A, Div B. We'll go to Div B first. Div B. We'll look at the games that happened. Two and a half, al- uh, two and a half alcoholics winning 40 to 18 over Dream Killers. And that was without Paul Lapierre. Is there a, is there a snapper controversy? Dun, dun, dun. Maybe. No. Probably not. Uh, surprised by this game, or w- no. was Dream Killers' uh, time coming to an end? Um, I'm not surprised at all. Because um, like, I understand that you look at Dream Killers and on the surface – it appears to be just uh, a ridiculous, uh, a ridiculous team, and and obviously an overmatch for uh, for two and a half uh, alcoholics, especially without Paul Pierre there with his experience and his size. But firstly, Joey Taylor did everything he wanted to do in this game. He he was able to go deep. He was able to attack intermediate. He was able to call all of his crossing routes, um, and a lot of it comes down to. This is probably the best built team for Joey Taylor that he's ever played with. Danny DeMore and Don Benevento and Zach Swern fit with him perfectly. Um, on the other side of it, Jeff Rosenblatt didn't... He was looking for kill shots all game and instead wasn't able to, to, to get the ball moving. And it's, it's surprising. I thought, I thought Jeff Rosenblatt would be... I didn't think him being down early would affect him. I didn't think... Or, or early in the second half anyway, because that's when the game really got away from him. But I didn't think that he, he would panic once they made a mis- mistake. I really thought that this is a good enough team where he felt like, I don't need to do all the work. But it, it felt like he thought he was shouldering more of a load than really he even had to. Um, and honestly... I wouldn't sell two and a half alcoholics short. They're they're a very well built roster. Well, look at the look at the stat line here. It's it's a fascination here that Joy had nineteen completions for two hundred one. Jeff had thirty for one ninety six. Mm-hmm. It's just the efficiency of what he does on the offense. That's the game but it's the yards the, again. So like a lot of that was first half. It was Jeff Rosen left football. Second half, it, it just. He was he was looking he was looking to just come back get it all back in one play yeah and it, the, the lead just kept growing and um, there was a, there was one missed time throw in the middle of the field uh, Don Benevento made him pay uh, also Joey Taylor making a diving tackle he made like three or four ridiculous tackles in the game but one where he completely completely laid out and, and uh, deflated Khalil Kerr in the flats was was absolutely out of this world. All right, uh, Tats winning uh, over uh, Jasmine's Suns, 27-26. There was some controversy. There was some controversy. But you and I were there for that. I was. Uh, I thought it was We right were, Mo. We. we. There's we no I in team, bro. There's no I team. There's I in wins, though, and they won, Tats. Yeah, but we didn't play, so it's irrelevant. I uh, did this game not go into overtime? This game went into overtime. Okay, so the overtime thing was incorrect. They're not showing the proper overtime. Corey. Uh, okay, so the, the controversy was. You know why that happens, eh? Because when you score, Keith doesn't check the overtime box. Because I didn't work Sunday, therefore it wasn't I who scored. Yes. I, don't know, Mo. I feel like this is you not taking responsibility of for your course, scorekeeping crew. Absolutely. Group. Yeah. Why didn't you train Corey Lewowski? I you? should have done a better job. Okay. So I agree. <laughs> overtime. Jasmine Ryu is uh, lined up against Matthew Uhl. And That's not a very uh, good well, there was so to be fair, myself, Mo, Brent Botkin, Corey Lewowski, we're all looking at the quarterback. So no, actually, actually, I saw, I saw Ugo. So rocked. you saw the contact? I, he got rocked. He got rocked. Okay, but so like w- in your in your mind, was it a penalty? Yes, it was. So Jasmine Ryu lost his mind after this game. Like really lost his mind. Like He's just very screaming calm. and screaming and like he couldn't believe the call. And he was saying that, look, the, the, the receiver ran into me. I didn't see it. I heard the content. Oh, no, oh, I content. saw it. I, I watched Ugo because I thought he was the actually, guy. Actually, it, it wasn't you. It was Tara who also didn't see it. Like, there was like four of us standing yeah. together and we're all just looking at the quarterback. So we didn't see the contact. 
uh, more you saying so you saw it. So can you describe what so happened? So Wool, because I, I, I said, I, I think I said to Brent or Corey, I said, hey, I think Matthew Wool will be the guy to watch on this play for the for the perhaps game winning catch, right? And I was watching Wool. He's running it. You look very professional, Mo. Thank you very much. <laughs> very erotic right now. Yeah, I don't need to see your hairy legs. I know. No problem. All right. So, Will was running at 10 in. And as he approached the cut. <laughs> like, <laughs> Thank like, you. Basically, it's the cr- Sharon Stone over here, you know. Uh, so, as Will was making this cut in front of the goal line, Jasmine Ryu and him connected physically. And Will took the brunt of it. And he fell hard to the ground. Now, the play went through, and then the flag came maybe a second after the conclusion of the play. And Jasmine was not happy about that, saying, what the bleed is not fair. It's, it's horse crap. That wasn't a, it wasn't an intentional PI. It was just incidental contact. And he got two OCs at the end of the game. And lo and behold, Tats win in overtime. Was he actually giving the two OCs? He was. I felt, honestly, so I felt the two OCs was overkill from... Uh, the referee. Was a... Uh, yeah, I won't say names. No. Um, look, the guy is emotional because he just lost the playoff game. It's okay. It wasn't a, a threatening situation. He was swearing. He was name calling. That's fine. Uh, if I'm the, if I'm the ref there, I'm not I'm not calling an OC in that spot. I'm just sort of like, you know, Jasmine Ryu is also not a guy. I always say pun- like you know punish the the crime, not the criminal. But like you know, he's not a guy who's been in a lot of trouble. And in this case. I don't even think the crime was particular. Like you want to give him an OC after the game, that's fine. But giving him two OCs for the same thing, I think, is overkill. A little double jeopardy, in my opinion. Well, look, I, this was a good game. This was a good game. Tats were on the ropes for, for a bit. Tats didn't play well. They did not play well. Jasmine and Suns did play well. Uh, but unfortunately for them, they come up short. So look at the Div A game, which uh, Steph and I were there for. So Mike Pierre saying, wait, before we go on, Mike Pierre saying had a message for... He claimed, so this is like a little fodder for the finals game. He claimed that uh, Joy Taylor reported J.D. Chevalier for not wearing a jersey at the last game. Yeah, yeah, that was a topic to show at Papineau. On, on and Monday. therefore, uh, J.D. Chevalier did not qualify for playoffs. And he was saying how they won't need him to beat two and a half alcoholics. So, some, fuel for, some food for thought heading into the finals. Fair enough. All right, Braves outsiders. Steph and I were there for this game. Uh Yes, that's the whole point. Uh, Kevin Wyeth, I thought, unfortunately, came up short. Some bad throws by him. Yeah, he and w- drops too. Drops. Right I was gonna through. say, was it bad throws or? Yeah, so this decision this making wasn't there. Wasn't well, I mean, there, the, one of the worst interceptions I probably saw him throw. I mean, great play by George Gary P. But he was trying to throw between two of the Braves defenders. One was George Gary P. and the other was Alex Pilo. And uh, in honestly, the end zone. in the end zone, yeah, trying to go big, uh, and <laughs> and uh, you know. Uh, George Getty AP took a mental sprint and he just batted the ball and it almost hit the floor, but Alex Pilon was able to like gather it before it hit the ground. And that pick was I- incredible. That that was the start of uh, them not making it. But, uh, you know, this is this is something I don't really see why it do often. There's four plays left. He's down by six. And he all four throws, he went deep. No, the first two were short. Mohamed Faneuf had a terrible... Oh, yeah, he, he was dropping. He, dropped he, he was like, rough. It was, it was rough for him. Bad, and they kept going day. to him at the same route, like an out. The, the hook on the sideline. The hook on the sideline. And he, just, he kept trying to make the same kind of play, and he, always the same result. Hit off his chest but and hit the floor. What killed them was the death-defying airborne attempt by Matt Bond in the end zone. He dove in the end zone, had possession... Mm-hmm. But the ball came out before he landed on the ground, which was which would have been six points and would have been 38-38 going for the extra point win here. But I just thought the momentum generated by it's outsiders, spread. they had a, remember, they had a four and out, yeah. which they were able to get back the ball and score. But they just didn't have the kill shot in them to find themselves one more touchdown or one more stop on defense that would have been enough to beat Braves. But, so someone explain this. So... Uh, Maher or Pilon don't throw any INTs. Why is throw three of them and the game is ending with outsiders with the ball with the opportunity to tie it? Yes. Yeah. How does that make any sense? Because what happened? They had, they had a stop. but it's One stop isn't enough if on three INTs? Yeah, yeah, you're right. But the thing is, when you look at the, the broader context, again, outsiders had... Well, one of the INTs was the end of the half. Yeah, exactly. One of the INTs was the end of the half. Yeah. But why if... If this was a mediocre game, this is Kevin Wyatt's mediocre game right here, and and it just 
I think you saw body expression wise that he's a like, bleep. I could have done better with some of these oh, throws. Oh, for sure, for sure. And I think the throw that and Steph made the paint of the picture well enough. I think the throw he would love to have back was one deep middle into the end zone late in the second half that could have easily been the go-ahead touchdown, but not to be the case. And the Braves escape uh, the jaws of death once again with a close victory. Now they go up against Yuxu in the finals. Yep. All right, let's talk about the finals, uh, the Div A final, Yuxu against Braves. Uh, Terry Tam, who um, said, look, you know, we beat Outsiders three, three straight times. We want the Braves because they beat us. So that I think we no knew sense. this This was going to be the that final. That makes no sense. This is a team we can beat, like a, a and we always match. beat, but I don't want to play against them. No, he wants like the grudge match. The grudge match. Please, match but I, I, this, shut up. But this is the game shut that up, we Terry. thought we, we would garbage. see in the bottom, You know what? Right? You should be thankful that Terry covered for you that day. Yeah. Yeah, I am. And now but, you're telling him that he's garbage. Yeah. yeah no, I'm saying what he's thought. saying is garbage. Oh, but it's, it's not true. Like, but this is the game we thought would happen, though, right? This is what we thought yeah. would be the case. <laughs> week be, one. <laughs> week one. Like, we didn't have to play the full, like, 14 weeks of the season, but we did because out of respect for no regard and outsiders. But where is the weakness in... These are the best two teams. They, they are the best two teams. So where is the weakness lying for Yuxu and for Braves? Nope. None for both teams. No. Okay, where's the strength <laughs> like lying for Yuxu? It's the height of FPF this season. It's the best that FPF gets this season. You think uh, if Alex Hollowock were to lose, you think he would survive? Like, do you think like his body would combust and like he like not survive? I don't know if spontaneous combustion is a thing that actually happens. Eagle, can you look that up? If, if spontaneous conduction? Combustion. 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 It is conduction. A conduction. <laughs> like you just break can out you, of the um, orchestra. Can you look it up. Conduction. You just start. You just start driving a train. Yeah. Can you look up what conduction? What it means, please. You well, just you just start how's the conducting pole electricity? How's the pole going? Am I winning? It is going well. Conduction occurs when two <laughs> objects at different so temperatures are in contact with each other. Okay, that's right. I was talking might have a... He may, he may be hot and cold. Yeah, exactly. He may be hot and cold. He may be cold and he um, may be hot. No, uh, look, Alex Holowak knows he's competing against the best of the best. Um, he obviously wants to win, but if he doesn't, it's gonna just dry, it's gonna just fuel his drive to compete even further. He there's not a more competitive Dude in this world than Alex Holloway. Bigger game, George Garrett P or Justin McLean? Yes. Whoever has that will likely win. But who has a bigger game, though? Who, who, who do you think is going to have a bigger game this weekend? Mike Pierce. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, man. Like, it's, uh, it's impossible to predict. We'll see. We'll see on, on the road show. And, uh, who's on this game, Eagle? Uh, this is going to be GM Kalethrith and Carmen Peliche. There we go. Both Hall of Famers. Yeah. Just like everyone at this table. Sorry, Steph. <laughs> I'm a Hall of Famer. No. Not yet. I'm Maybe a Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. You were Employee of the Year. You were fired once this season, so... Steph, what's the keys for you in this game? Uh, honestly, I, I hope that... We all know Hallowack is a is an incredible quarterback, but t- for some reason, when it comes to this the, the final game, he... he there's something about him that he just he, he takes he he gets into his own head. I mean, he has a championship. He does, I know, so. but I'm just saying it, it, he has I mean, one. He overstudies. For he uh, overstudies. He overthinks things in the final game. I'm like, honestly, just just in my opinion, he probably won't listen to me because nobody does, and that's okay. But uh, you, just you need just a therapist. Take it. No, I don't, because okay. they won't listen to me either. <laughs> <laughs> they won't listen to me either. Anyways, take it as just another game. Without any kind of uh, end result, just take it as what it is, and he'll be fine. I just hope he doesn't get into his own head, and uh, you know, and he'll be fine. Eagle, put it on the, on the poll. Would a therapist listen to Stefan Berardi? <laughs> the answers not. are yes, or no. uh, he's a terrible scorekeeper. Yeah. Well, only if you pay him. <laughs> even well, then, and even am, then, I'm even broke then. as a joke. So, no. well, okay, here we go. Would you rather pay Stefan Berardi a hundred bucks to be a therapist, or pay him hundred bucks to be a scorekeeper? You uh, burned your poll. On your yeah. Kevin Kusai choice. Fair. I, I prefer that poll anyway. Um, this is going to be interesting. It's it's just on the surface, you look at Braves and what they've done in FPF as soon as they've gotten here. Uh, John Mayhew has been outstanding. Um, his whole supporting cast is, is out of this world. And we see them as the favorite, right? Like We see them yeah, as... For sure. Coming into this game, you see them as like, okay, well... They're gonna. They're the guys. They're the big. They're, they're the top dogs. They're the, they're the ones who won at this level before. Um, but yet, there's something about you can't sit with us where we know they'll be like this game's gonna go back and forth. And like, would you be surprised 
Like we're saying Braves are the favorite, but would you be surprised if you can't sit with us win the game? No, no, not at all. And we'll make our picks at the end of the game, at the end of this podcast. But but that's 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 to me an impressive statement, given the force that the Braves have been in their short tenure in FPF. It is going to be the immovable object against the unstoppable force. Who's who? Immovable, I think, is Yuxu because of Terry Tan. That's fair. That's fair. All right, uh, Tats against two and a half al- alcoholics. Last game to preview before we make our picks. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. What would you like to know? <laughs> what would you like to know, Mo? <laughs> uh, look, we, we talk about Braves and their short term of success. Tats, they, they're, rising. They're, they're rising fast here, boys. And uh, if they were to win this, this would definitely blow open the doors of what the potential could be for this team in the higher divisions come winter well, of 2020. I mean, what? Well, I mean, they could probably also open eyes and like, more people would want to probably play with So them. the way they won in overtime, by the way, was a deflected ball at the front of the end zone that landed into the chest of Nicolas Jean Um So it, like the, the, the whole turn of events, given, given that they won looking so bad, like that just means that Coming to this game, they have to have so much confidence to be like, we won playing our worst game. Right. You know, and the, the, the size of guys like Julien Bellavance. Like, Julien Bellavance is a guy that not even a lot of dudes in FPF know, despite the fact that he's immensely talented. He's big, he's fast, he's physical. He's a guy who never says a word, just does his job constantly. Yeah, I don't think I've ever heard him speak. I, he's a nice guy. I have. He's nice a guy. nice guy, funny guy, too. Um, but. No, but I mean on the field. Like I, I no, never no, no, him, never. Never he saw just him get mad. Never saw him talk to his quarterback. But never saw him. Like that. But we see him. that. We see he that. He did what he was told, and then that's it. We see the size of, of him. Mathieu. Uh, you know, Mathieu Alexis Mathieu Gaumont, Mathieu Mathieu Hull, is crazy. Uh These guys are all big, all athletic. Uh, and now adding guys, like, so you're saying how can they compete in, in, in you know, future, future seasons in the, at a higher division? They have Mike Piercey on this team. They have... They would have had J.D. Chevalier. They have Julien Payment. They would have had J.D. Chevalier. So part of them, th- if they move up, they would need to replace that with guys who are, you know, Impact Braves players. core players. Yeah. But um, I think l- they're the kind of team where, like Alex Hallwax is attracting a lot of talent, I think Alpha Tees are going to start attracting a lot of talent because they're the fun, upcoming, they'll exciting probably thing. attract like the Abu Sweeney's, the Clemson's pro- of the world. They'll probably attract, like, the Division Four. Division no, but I think I think they'll be able to get a, a guy in Division One or two. That's like, to hey, you know what? Ship? We're that's not rare. winning. We're not winning with this okay. team. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean. Let's try. Win, let's try going with this team. Yeah, you know okay, what I mean? I'll get you. Might as well give it a shot. Yeah, uh, Joey Taylor, the most lightning rod <laughs> issue in FPF. Man, if he wins a championship, a lot of people are gonna be so butt hurt. I would love. Sean to Abrams is yep. gonna cry in his bathtub. Yeah, Sean Abrams. Not even shower. Or will he be taking a shower bath and crying? A shower bath is when you sit on the floor of your shower and your ass is blocking the drain so the water level rise. What but if here, the water level is rising even more because of the tears. What if he takes face. a bath in his own tears? He will. He will. He'll have to. Is that too? He's yeah. crying right now. He probably is. He's starting he's 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 now. He takes a lot of tears to fill a bathtub. Yeah, yeah. bathtub is sure. crazy. Bathtubs are immense, like, dude. What is that? Sure. Yeah, it takes a long time. I mean, I haven't, like, I don't take baths because I don't fit in a bathtub. You just need to get a bigger bathtub. I, yeah, I know. Dude, there's but bathtubs see, that fit everyone. Yeah, no, for sure. A thousand percent. But I, that's like, what pools are. That's true. We just put some bubble and whatever the fuck that shit's going Love that stuff. Because no, I don't want to see my own gut in nah. a bathtub. I don't so see bubble bath is key. Bubble bath is very Bubble bath is key. Tears and bubble bath, Sean Avram. I mean, so, yo, son, your next team, Tears and Bubble Bath. Oh, that's a fantastic name. Joey's fantastic Tears. Name. Joey's Tears. <laughs> Joey's Tears. Joey's um, Praise. I also think this is the worst possible matchup for two and a half alcoholics because of the size issue, because of the speed. Uh, they can just lean on them. And and Joey Taylor will not be able to buy extra time on, Jul- on Julian Payman. That won't happen. Right. So what is the key mode? What do you think? Joey Taylor needs to do to to be holding his first ever FPF trophy his, and pissing off everyone. He's got to keep his his uh, temper and control. Yeah, I feel that's like big. he that's key. he is the type of guy with a bigger, lumbering, athletically gifted tats can get physical with his over with his receivers. If he sees something where a guy is getting touched or illegally touched or whatever you want to call it, pushed. that's terribly mm. phrased. Yeah, uh, he's yeah, going to complain. Ref, 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 ref where's here. the call? Where's the call? And you know, Joey, when he, once he gets riled up by, by the non-call by the referee, it gets him off his game. Yeah. And that's where I think he's got to control his temper and keep himself locked in. If he doesn't do that, 
He's going to be in a hell of, of a nightmare to get out of it because the Tats can score points at a high clip, and they can create turnovers at an even better clip. But how can they manage? How can they manage the size issue? Because yes, they have Paul. I think Paul Pierre is going to be the guy. That's that fine, to, but he's got, he's got to loosen up that okay, size. Okay, so Paul Pierre takes Mathieu Ull, who takes. But Bruno. not even that. Just for Joey on defense, like what's what's immediately open when like Joey's got like, a, like Justin Dupuis is going to be lined up right in front of of Paul Pierre, right? But do you like that matchup? I for anyone. Do, but but this is what has to happen for Joey's t- Joey's office because again, it's it's unpredictable, unorthodox. It's it's not religious at all. He's got to sense someone just for the shits and giggles. A go route just to get one guy out of that. Out of that. He does though. He has a go route on almost every but play. He might have, might have to send out two go routes and then go on a, on a two v two situation and hopefully have one of his guys inside that he likes to go to win that battle. Because if he's going to traffic that middle with all those cars, I can't see him having a high completion rate as he's done in his career. Um, it, it's it's going to be one of the hardest. Like Joey Taylor had a chance to win a championship in his first season. Uh, when they lost to Le Malud, this will be an even greater challenge. Him winning this would be impressive because of the Afati's uh, pedigree now in FPF, their, their their playoff pedigree that we've seen. Like how like how many playoff losses do Afati's have? One. Yeah. One. Yeah. Like the, in the entire yeah. time they've been yeah. in the, like, a serious does playoff. Does Joy Taylor shake JD Chevalier's hand? Win or lose? Yes. Yeah. yeah Joy JD Chevalier is not even playing. If he's there, oh, well, he won't be there. So. Well, he will be because well, he, may, he might stick around. Oh, yeah, yeah Braves yeah, are playing, playing later. Yeah, true. All right, it's now Eagle. Time wait, wait, Eagle. Who's on the broadcast for this game? It's uh, Mo Khan, Carmen Pleach, right now. Uh, I, I actually, I'm not sure. Hold on, let Carmen me check. Right, no? Like why you know, you, why are you the worst at your job, Eagle? You know, I'm gonna ask you. This is the last I game. Mean, do I've done you? it for every division. You know, you haven't. Yep. No, we've done it for a couple of divisions. Just a every. couple. Every. It's Just a couple. Couple of every. Okay. Hold on, I'm loading it up. It's Carmen. I. Eagle looks like a crip. For B, it is Mo and Carmen Pelicia. Yes. Okay, Thanks, Eagle. Thank you. Oh, right, Chris Dagger is scorekeeper. Nice. Uh, riveting. Good All right. Uh, it is now time for games of the week. Well, Finals day. week. Game of the day. All right. Games and I numbers. did want to bring this up. Um, so I haven't showed the totals at the bottom yet. So on the left, you're going to see the prediction results by division, and I've broken it up by the round, so you can see how successful you were in the quarterfinals or divisional or semifinal rounds. On the right, you see your overall probability per the uh, same thing, so for each round, but then by division. All right, get to the point here. Let's get to the stats, man. That's all we care about. So, Mo, I want to point out that you had a... 66.7% 66.7% divisional rate, a 70.8 quarterfinals rate, and then you tanked the semifinals. You were terrible. You <laughs> actually were in the lead going into the semifinals week. <laughs> and now, for final results, the winner is... Stefano! Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's <done>. That's <laughs> horseshit! That's horseshit! Thank you, Terry! Terry well, Tam. Terry. <laughs> Terry Tam. And actually, yeah, Terry Tam for the uh, semifinals, he did just as good as Pease, and Pease was the last going into that last week. And Mo, you tanked. Looks like looks like Mo needs to buy Stefano Pitcher. <laughs> oh, we're going to see predictions, though. We're going to see I mean, but look, your, your list is last. Ooh. Well, last oh. is the same thing. What's the tiebreaker, Ego? Uh, semis, semis predictions. Well, tiebreaker I goes so. to whoever what? is doing the most finals on Sunday. Okay, relax. So uh, please, <laughs> you You're win. second player. You want second place, <laughs> Yeah, yeah that's where we're oh, shit. Good please stuff. Please explain this thing here. That's that's shit. Yeah. I'm a winner. Terry Tam. Don't worry, we'll split the prize that Mo buys us. Well, I thought we were doing the finals, though, no? Or is that... Who, is what that? podcast do we have next week, Mo? We'll keep track yeah. of it. No, uh, no, no. No, we said you had, you had to buy something at the finals. You have oh, to right, buy yeah, me yeah. something at the final. Actually, Pease, I think you can win anyways because all you got to do is pick the exact same team as Mo. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm going to do. Sure, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so congratulations, Stefano. You've done nothing. So basically, we all choose the same thing, and I still win. Yes. No, but no, but it has to be the bet has to end now because the He's winner right. had to He's buy right. something yeah, for yeah. the loser exactly. at the final. Yeah, yeah. So Stefano, what do you want from Mo? Huh? And Mo's going to show up late, though. What a guy. I don't know. We'll see. We'll figure it out. Yeah, well, call me. I'm, that, I'm on that, my way. That's the okay. worst content ever. I know, but like... You I, had weeks I, to I, think I, about I, it. I, I was last place two weeks ago. So, there's that. Um, huh. That's why I say thank you, Terry. 
<laughs> Let's go through the list here in order. What so, are my options, though, by the way? Whatever you want. Oh, uh, okay. Don't make it expensive. All right. Well, I mean. Well, don't make it ridiculously expensive, rather. Ridiculously isn't it expensive? The, isn't it what I'm buying at Duns? Is that what it is? Uh, yeah. yeah that's let's it. pick up the Duns stamp. There you go. Picking up my Duns stamp. Pick up the Duns stamp for the media team. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> that'd be nice. <laughs> All right, so at 1 o'clock on field three, we have Coed 2, Drunk Again and Looking to Score versus Yin and Yang. So who's starting? I go Drunk Again. I can't see Gino DeFazio losing this game. Give me Yin Yang. Yin and Yang. And this game will be brought to you by Brent Bodkin and Tara Mrazic. Is that how you pronounce it? Rakic. Rakic. There we go. Uh, then at the two... I feel like we did that one already. We told the people. That's okay. okay. Heard it we're going to do all of them because mm-hmm. we're doing it properly. Ooh. And then Improperly, at 2-10, yeah, yeah. again, co-ed on field three, Midtown versus third down for what? Midtown is stacked. Third down for what's missing. Midtown. The, the only parts of them that would be able to keep up, so give me Midtown. 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 And we also have Brenton Tara on this game. All right. Good for uh, again, 310, which should really be 320, but sure. Uh, Division E2, Mambo versus Blackouts. Mambo. Um, <laughs> I really want Blackouts to win this game, but I know I better than to choose against people the you guys, so I got to pick Mambo, and now they're going to lose. Mambo. So I'm Mambo. sorry, Nikki. I'm sorry, Joe. I'm sorry, guys. Eh, it's just going to happen. And you will have to watch this live because it is Pease De La Riz with Corey Wawoski doing the E2 broadcast. Wonder Wawoski. Then at 420, Division D2, Buffalo Wild Wings versus Le Voyou. Um, Le Voyou. I can't imagine this continuing. Yeah, Le Voyou is going to wreck. Uh, for Le Buffalo Wild Wings, Le Voyou. Uh, give me Le Voyou in this yeah, game. Yeah, Voyou. For this game, we mentioned this is going to be our first ever francophone broadcast with yeah. Francois Martin and Marc-André De Lorny. I'll be watching tennis. 5.30, Division A, Yik's Woo versus Braves, the, the big call? one. Who's on the call for this game here? Uh, uh, it'll be Eagle? GM Calethris and Carmen Pulice. Uh, we did that one already. Close. I, this is like, you're picking straws now, man. I, like picking Harris. Yeah. I don't know. This is going to be a great game. You can't sit with us. Because, look, for Terry Tam, this will be his first title like in almost nine years. Uh, Didn't he win? Yeah, because that's why this game is going to be close. Because nobody else matters on the field except Terry Tam. That's how Terry sees it. Yeah, that makes sense. Checks out. That's how Terry sees life. Why doesn't he want to challenge me in Madden? What? I don't he know. always refuses my head-to-head. Because he doesn't want you to see his place. Fair. I'm going to go, I'm gonna go Yuxu because the Braves have some close calls. And they w- when they were on the edge of being thrown off the mountain, they were able to keep themselves alive. I'm going to go Yuxu. My heart says you can't sit with us, and my brain is not functioning as always. You can't sit with us. What was the point of that? Oh, very fair. I didn't know what I was going to say when I started my sentence. And, then after you and so I got to yeah, where sense. I got yeah, that while like, I was speaking. That sounds like peace is the best thing to do. There you go. Next one. All right. And like I mentioned, GM and Carmen are on that one. You said then that twice, we no? have at 640, Division D1, half A stars versus outlaws. This is the best game. I don't, I don't. Them and the Braves Yuxu game are the best. I mean, it's, it's hard to talk to you can't sit with us in Braves because that game's gonna be nuts. But yeah, li- like the, the fact that these two games are back to back is is awesome. I'm gonna go Outlaws. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna go Half Stars. Half Stars. Um, I you know I just Outlaws roster is ridiculous and Half a Stars is as well. But I just I think there are more holes in Half a Stars than there are in Outlaws. So give me Outlaws. I'm gonna take Half a Stars. Next. And for that broadcast, we have Peas with GM Calethris. Uh At 7.50. GM on color that, that, that time. He's doing, he's doing uh, play-by-play for Division A, but he's doing color with me in Division D1. 7.50, Division C, Mercenaries versus KGP. I think the Mercs going to win. So <sighs> are we, we're saying Gio DeFazio is the dual champion. I think I think yeah. so. I think this is the Gio year. DeFazio, dual this, Gio DeFazio. This, this will be the year where he, he exonerates himself to become uh, likable for people who come play for him. I don't think so. Yeah, I know. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> like, like, no, but like, it just, like, no offense, just, but when you see Gino, you see competitor, you see winner, you see hard worker. I, I, don't, I don't see, I don't see likable. likable. <laughs> no. Like, I don't think he's try. he's going for that either. No, he's not. And for Division C, we have Brent Bodkin and... 
Stefano Berardi. That's a terrible combo. What a duo Holy that's shit. gonna be. My oh that my. is awful. That is like that that's is like the D awful. team one. Like you're half of it. How are that, you? That's why it's awful because I'm that's part like, of it. That's like the. Uh, I've been fired from scorekeeping. Now they trust me with color commentary. That's, that's like true. the regional broadcast for NFL games, like the D team. You know, like Chris Jets Dougie. against like the Browns back in like 1995. At nine o'clock, Division B, Alpha T's versus two and a half alcoholics. You're going tats. Yeah. Man, something is just telling me uh, there's something about two and a half alcoholics this year. I'm I'm gonna I'm Maybe gonna the do fact it. That they have alcoholics in the team name. Sorry. Maybe the fact that they have alcoholics in their team name. I know. There's just there's just something like there's something that clicked with this unit about halfway through the season. Um, once Joey got back from Greece, for some reason that made him a better quarterback. Um, I I'm. Thrilled to see this matchup. I think it's a tough matchup for two and a half alcoholics. I didn't like the way Alpha T's some played last week, so maybe it's my, my recency bias. Uh, two and a half alcoholics are coming off a great game. Tats are coming off a bad game. Two and a half alcoholics. I'm going to say Tats. All right, last game. And that game will be brought to you by Mokon and Carmen Peliche. Excellent. Last game, 10-10. Let's hope. Division E, pardon my swag versus Los Bandidos. We said this had to be a close game for Brad Evans, and he's my boy, so I really hope... Um, it works out for him, but I don't think it will be. I think Los Bandidos is going to run with it, run away with it, and uh, this will be a tough broadcast for Mo Khan and Me Stefano Berardi. Oh, wow. Less worse than Dipsy. So wow. I'm picking Los Bandidos. You guys? Yeah, yeah I'm going Los, Los Bandidos. Bandidos. And don't forget, if you win, you will be awarded the trophy by none other than Commissioner Extraordinaire Simon Dajne. What a night. What a nice thing. Feel free to slap him in the nuts. Yeah. Okay, so uh, as we wrap up another year in the shipping container, or season in the shipping container, a lot of props go to the Eagle for his job. Today he was kind of weak. A little bit weak. He kind of nailed it in. Weak way to end the season. We fired Not really a playoff performer. Uh, we had a marriage as PZ got married. Yeah, officially locked down, and uh, I was still here. Somehow. He should marry Sort of. You should write stuff. No, I don't miss two. Solve two problems. It's true. Okay, so it, it gives guys, me one uh, envelope to give. So I know. Uh, Eagle, what's the uh, link for the uh, live broadcast uh, for Sunday, please? It's going to be directly on our Flag Plus football uh, <laughs> yeah, he's page. Look at him. He's like, <laughs> it's dry, and I ran out of coffee. Uh, it's going to be on our Flag Plus football page, so uh, facebook.com slash Flag Plus. You should see it live over there if everything works out well. A lovely 10-hour broadcast. Jesus Christ. And again, if you want to come to the games, you can. It starts off 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, Peace will be there 6 a.m., so you want to come and join him uh, as he will wire his way up. The, but uh, look, flight. it's not so bad because Kim Kusai is going to bring me some Pete's coffee. Yeah. He'll somehow still be warm. So that's amazing. Actually, we do have the results of that poll. I won't. Um, so right now, there aren't a lot of votes, to be honest with you. It's okay. But we'll currently, the next season. <laughs> there are five votes for a tub of vanilla ice cream from Cows. Bandana, uh, bandana list neckdana is third, and then a granola bar and the coffee are tied. It, no, sorry, uh, the bandana second, and gluten free granola bar and coffee is third. And we have. And also, comment. Chris Moray says, yeah. "Don't take away the only thing Prince Edward Island's got going. Uh, doesn't have uh, much else going for it. Give it All cows. Right, perfect. All right, uh, for the last time for the season, not too much, please. That was an impressive shotgun of a beer. Good night, Lumbu Lukaku. Pretty sure. That's was Baker Mayfield. This is a fun impressive. season, guys. Point it was a fun door. I had a good time. I had a good time. Really good. Clearly I hope our audience liked it. I, I except for the submergence. <laughs> they did not. <laughs> <laughs>